Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is hereby called to order. I would like to acknowledge the physical presence of uh, Senator Win Gatchalian and Senator uh, Francis Tolentino and the virtual uh, presence of uh, our colleagues and senators are uh, members of the Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education. Uh, Senator Bongo is uh, present online. Thank you for attending to this hearing. For this hearing's agenda, we shall take into consideration the following bills. Senate Bill number 236, or the mandatory Reserve Officer Training Corps Act by uh, Senator uh, Robin Hood Padilla, Senate Bill number 468, or the Revitalized Reserve Officers Training Corps Act by Senator Jingo Estrada, the Senate Bill number 1349, or the Reserve Officer Training Corps for Tertiary Education Act of 2022 by this humble representation. Senate Bill number 1235 or the Citizen Service Act by Senator uh, J.B. Ejercito. Senate Bill number 1551 or the Mandatory Basic Reserve Officers Training Corps Act by Senator Win Gatsalian. Now may I please uh, request the committee secretary to recognize the guest and resource Mr. persons Mr. present today. Ah, I think I filed a similar bill. Yung bill daw ni Senator Tolentino. Hindi pa na repair? Please, uh, ah, hanapin mo. And also, uh, another bill by uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. Pasensya ka na, Tol. Hindi, hindi pa lang nakita. Anyway, papahanap natin. Now, may I please request the uh, committee secretary to recognize the guest persons uh, present today. Thank guest, you. Uh, resource persons. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. With us today, our guests from the different uh, department, departments and agencies of the government, sir. To represent the Department of Education is Director Samuel Sullivan. Morning, sir. Morning from, po, uh, Mr. Chair and everybody. From the Department of National Defense, we have uh, Yusek Ignacio Madriaga, Undersecretary for Strategic and Planning Assessment, Assessment Planning, with ASEC Eric Lawrence D., ASEC for Legal and Legislative Affairs. From the Department of Finance, we have uh, Attorney Michael R. Aaron Gakutan, Policy Research and License Office. From the Department of Budget, we have with us online uh, the Chief of Budget and Management, Ms. Mary Rose Aguilar, uh, Chief Budget and Management Specialist, Ms. Rowena Marte, and uh, Senior Budget and Management Specialist, Ms. Elizabeth Joy Fadri as well as uh, the Budget Management Specialist, Ms. Louis Antoinette Sandoval. From the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, we have uh, the Supervising TESDA Specialist, Ms. Heidi Forte, also online, sir, and Mr. Ray Mart John S. Kiambao, online, sir, Attorney 3. From the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Brigadier General Romel P. Roldan. We have Brigadier General Doroteo Jose M. Halandoni. From the Senate Presidential Legislative Liaison Office, we have Yusek Bernisayo. From the Department of Justice, who is present virtually, sir, is State Council uh, Leilani Fajardo Aspiras. As well as, uh, oh yeah. From the 
Philippine Association of Private Schools, Colleges, and Universities. We have uh, the Corporate sec Secretary and Cocopea Managing Director, Attorney Joseph Noel M. Strada. From the Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities, uh, we have Attorney Joshua Calaguas, Assistant Legal Counsel. From the Vanguard, uh, we have Attorney Gilbert Raymond Reyes. From the NARAA or National ROTC Alumni Association, we have uh, Major General Marlu Salazar. We have Brigadier General Virgilio Garcia. Morning, sir. Sir and Chairman. We have uh, Brigadier General Quirino Alonso. And we all would also like to take note, sir, that uh, the following have already submitted their position papers, uh, UP Vanguard, sir, DBM, and Naraa, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Komsek. Again, thank you to our uh, resource persons uh, physically present today and also yung nasa online. Good morning, everyone, again. Uh, in times of distress, it is but normal for us to expect the worst to come. We are humans after all. The same goes, to, the same goes for times of uncertainty or war or at least rumors of it, including natural disasters, calamities, and other unpredictable events that push our country to its brink of panic. All these events call for our preparedness. Miguel de Cervantes, a Spanish novelist, stated, to be prepared is half the victory. I take this opportunity to ask my fellow citizens do we not feel the threat of our nation to threat to our nation brought about by devastating natural disasters? Do not the continued reclamation and expanded constructions in the West Philippine Sea bother you? The demand for our readiness comes in all forms, and it is staring us right in the face. The question is, how do we respond to all of this? Today, we will tackle bills that propose the restitution of the ROTC program and or the citizen service training course as, mandate, as mandatory component in the public and private tertiary level edu educational institutions. As we come to discuss in detail, the positions of its significant agency, we will see the benefits that these measures hold for the future of our country. This is to address the possibility that when there is a threat, whether natural or man-made, and I'm certain they will come, we will be ready, not just the government, but the whole nation. Indeed, to be prepared is already one half of winning the battle. In this regard, I could say that this is, this is one of the purposes of the Senate, to aid in equipping our people with the necessary skills for the protection and preservation of life. We want the confidence to say that whatever the trials may be, we can always rely on one another as brothers and sisters of this republic. If I, may leave you, um, if I may leave you with another quote, this time from John Woden, confidence comes from being prepared. Mga kababayan, hindi natin alam kung ano ang mangyayari sa atin sa mga darating na panahon. Ngunit ang natitiya ko ay walang ibang magpapahalaga at magmamahal sa ating bayan, kundi tayo rin. As chair of this subcommittee, I look forward to everyone's positions, comments, and suggestions on the bills to be considered. Moreover, I anticipate that as we work together, we will build a better future 
for our children and our communities. Before I end, I would like to thank the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, Senator Chis Escudero, for uh, designating me as the Subcommittee Chairman to tackle all these ROTC bills. Maraming salamat at uh, magandang umaga again sa ating lahat. Uh, Senator Wynn Gatsalian, uh, your opening statement. You have the floor, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for uh, conducting, conducting this hearing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to manifest and uh, also inform the body that uh, my original proposal was to reinstitute ROTC at the senior high school level. In fact, uh, a few bills were passed, uh, a few bills were submitted to the Basic Education Committee, which I chair. Uh, five bills were uh, filed in the Basic Education Committee. I think that includes also the bill of uh, Senator Francis Tolentino. And the basic uh, intention of those bills is to bring back our OTC at the senior high school level. Senior high school level, meaning kids who are attending school uh, age uh, uh, 16, 17, and 18. Uh, but Mr. Chair, I would like to stress that um, there are a lot of events that led to my uh, reconsideration of reinstituting ROTC at the senior high school level and bringing it back instead at the college level. And let me uh, show some slides, Mr. Chairman, on why I decided to um, reconsider and instead reinstitute it at the college level. Uh, number one is COVID-19. No? Uh, Mr. Chairman, COVID-19 has damaged our basic education system. Uh, and in fact, it uh, created a lot of complication in terms of learning outcomes. And let me just show a slide on the proficiency levels of senior high school graduates uh, conducted by DepEd uh, using their basic education exit assessment. Uh, if you can see from this slide, and this is pre-pandemic level, hindi pa ho tumatama dito ang uh, COVID-19. You can see that on the average, the proficiency level of our senior high school students in science, math, language is uh, around the 30s level. Meaning at 30s level, ang category nila low proficient. So even prior to the pandemic, our, our senior high school students already ranking at the low proficient level in math, science, and uh, language, meaning English, no? in, in, in short. Definitely, Mr. Chairman, the pandemic will create a lot of damage in the proficiency levels of our senior high school students. I don't see a scenario wherein the pandemic will elevate the proficiency levels of our senior high school students. Uh, we don't have the numbers yet. The DepEd is conducting the rapid assessment for all levels, but I'm already expecting that uh, these numbers will go down at the very least. Next is um, the World Bank conducted um, a, a survey or a assessment on reading. You know? And this is what they call the learning poverty estimates of the World Bank. And this uh, assessment is conducted among 10-year-old uh, students. Basically, what this is saying, uh, during the pandemic, 90% of our students cannot read uh, basic uh, stories. And um, let me just point out, uh, this is 10-year-old 10 10 kids uh, in our basic education system. So uh, if, if they cannot read uh, at age 10, obviously it will also have an impact when they go up the ladder in junior high school and also in senior high school. So just goes to show that, that COVID-19 did a lot of damage when it comes to the academics of our students. The number two reason, Mr. Chairman, is when we conducted two hearings. In fact, when I was the... Uh, the, during the uh, 17th and the 18th Congress, we conducted two hearings on ROTC at the senior high school level. We requested the DND to submit to us a budget, you know, their estimated budget. Uh, right now, we have zero ROTC in our senior high school level. So reinstituting them will need a lot of 
budget, no? So we asked them for a budget estimate. And uh, their submission to us that it will cost about nine, uh, slide three, 9.2 billion pesos in terms of budget to reinstitute uh, ROTC at the senior high school level. And the, our, our friends from the DO, from the DND can elaborate on this later on. So in other words, at this present time of trying to reduce budget deficit, trying to allocate funds to um, improve our uh, school system, uh, 9.2 budget is quite, 9.2 billion is quite a hefty sum you know, to uh, reinstitute um, our OTC from zero you know, in our senior high school level. So in other words, uh, starting from scratch will cost you about 9.2 billion pesos. The third one, uh, reason, um, Mr. Chair, and I, I, this is actually a bit, a bit of good news. No, uh, after the uh, implementation of the free college tuition, meron na tayong free college tuition po. Eh, eh, we saw a improvement in terms of uh, senior high school students graduating, or oh, senior high school students moving to the college level. If you remember, one of the arguments. Uh, in reinstituting it at the senior high school level is because we want to capture all senior high school students. No? But data is showing that almost on, on the average, 81% of our students are already moving from senior high school to college. Halos lahat na huyan, Mr. Chair. No? So we're just talking about 19%, so about 180,000 students who are not moving from senior high school to college. Um, I would like to discuss that later on, uh, on what to do with that 180,000 students who are not moving to college. But in, in summary, uh, because of the free higher education, we are seeing encouraging signs of students uh, get uh, students having interest moving to college. And in fact, they're moving to college because they don't have tuition fee, Mr. President. So this is an encouraging number uh, because we are now having... We are now seeing more students going into college. But bearing, bearing in mind, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman, that if you look at the entire system, you know, from grade one to senior high school, uh, it's actually not as encouraging as uh, I, I, I want, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we saw um, that uh, the cohort survival from grade one all the way to grade 12 is only 51%. So yung mga pumapasok po sa grade 1, kalahati lang po ang nag-graduate sa senior high school. No? This is actually a much uh, much pressing problem to solve uh, by DepEd and also by our country because uh, in our estimate, about 1.4 million students uh, drop out of our system. Meaning if they go into grade 1, 1.4 million students do not graduate senior high school. No? So this is actually a much more pressing problem that we need to solve as a country dahil maraming nag-drop out along the way. But I also want to throw this to the committee and, and put this on the table because these students, even though they drop out, obviously they will turn 18. And the system, the ROTC, mandatory ROTC in college will not capture them because, this, because uh, by mandating <clears throat> ROTC to college students, and obviously 1.4 million students are not moving into college, those 1.4 million students will not undertake mandatory ROTC. So these, these are the things that we need to think about because if we want ROTC to be universal, meaning lahat po ng 18-year-old dapat mag-train, then 1.4 million students are not uh, being trained by ROTC with ROTC. So something to think about by the committee. Maybe we can look at uh, RA 7077, the Reservice Act. Um, uh, I think that's a, that's a law that can address this um, or cohort survival issue, uh, Mr. Chairman. So Mr. Chairman, in sum, in summary, those are the three reasons why uh, I reconsidered my proposal to reinstate it at the senior high school level and instead re reinstate it at the uh, college level because the college level it's already there no? uh, through the NSTP uh, they're already being trained uh, those who want to be trained with ROTC are already being trained so we, we just need to expand it 
So uh, by expanding it, obviously, we also need the budget to do that. And those are the things that we can discuss here at the committee level. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity to explain my uh, rationale for uh, reconsidering my original proposal. Thank you, Your Honor, Senator Rawin Gachalian, the chairman of uh, the basic, uh, basic Education Committee. Uh, you are, uh, by doing that, you are making our life uh, easier in this subcommittee uh, in tackling all these uh, bills, you know. You make it uh, easier at the same time, making it more, uh, by, because you, you open the gates uh, about uh, those who are not going to uh, uh, progress to grades 12. So uh, from, from a very, very idealist point of view, they become wasted resources as far as defense of this country is concerned. And this is somebody developed, right? So you are, again, you are uh, adding another problem to this. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Anyway, we will uh, subject that to another discussion. Maybe we will amend the Reservist Act by uh, making it mandatory. Yeah, uh, Reservist Act, gawin natin mandatory. Para lahat ng hindi pumunta sa college ay makapag undergo ng parang semi-conscription. Uh, conscription ang gagawin. But anyway, I will uh, tackle that in another uh, uh, time. But uh, as I have said to you yesterday, we have to break this to them gently. Dandahanin mo natin, unahin mo natin yung college. Pag okay na yung college, nakita nila, oh, wala pala problema eh. Yung kinatakutan ninyo na hising sa ROTC, kinatakutan nyo na corruption sa ROTC, magandang management ng DND at ng uh, CHED sa program na ito, ni hindi na kayo dapat matakot. So, again, breaking it to them gently hanggang makuha, ma-capture natin yung buong uh, uh, population ng uh, Pilipino youth. Thank you, uh, Your Honor, for that uh, suggestion. Uh, from here, we, I would like to give the floor to Senator Francis Tolentino. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, by the way, before you start, uh, I think you're already informed that you're missing uh, uh, proposal uh, landed to landed in the committee of uh, Senator Gatsalian. Hindi pa yan na-refer dito. Siguro, uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you, you know what to do na lang para madala dito. Let's uh, ask the committee on rules. Paano yan dalhin dito? Meron din ako. Nandun din sa committee mo, di ba, Mr. Chairman? Uh, nandun sa committee niya. But nag-file na rin ako ng panibago para dito. Para two-prong attack. <laughs> Dalawang committee, natake natin. Para siguruhin natin may balik ang ROTC. <laughs> Senator Tolentino, please, uh, you have the floor, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I respect the, the opinion of the good uh, chairman of the Committee on Basic Education. So that would lead me to retool my first bill, which is quite different from the other bills because mine would include police training. Because years ago, before some of you were not yet born, the Philippine Constabulary was part of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. So my version would include police training similar to what Malaysia has been doing. So we will refile, uh, Your Honor, but I was just surprised with the figures given by our good friend, Senator Gachelian. From 57%, those entering senior high would be 51% because of the pandemic. And I'm, try I'm trying to reconcile this with uh, the figures given by the Philippine Statistics Authority, Mr. Chairman, during the budget hearing, which is quite uh, a revelation to me and other members of the Senate concerning the downturn and the abrupt, abrupt uh, drop in unemployment because of, to quote the Philippine Statistics Authority, and you can uh, browse the records, the reason being is that most of those working at home during the pandemic, during the lockdown, opted to go to college this semester and the previous semester. So that accounted for the abrupt spike in college students, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority. So if we try to rec reconcile the figures provided by Senator Gachelian and the Philippine Statistics Authority, I don't know their modeling formula, perhaps there is a good reason 
to buttress the claim of Senator Gachalian that ROTC should perhaps land in the laps of the higher education system. So, Mr. Chairman, I will file another bill, perhaps today, for ROTC, but with that modification that police training should be included. I had uh, several guests yesterday, hindi na nakadaan sa'yo, Senator De La Rosa, the entire uh, academic hierarchy of the PNPA. No, kaya, kaya hindi na ako naka-attend ng adjournment natin na napatagal na ako doon sa pag-uusap doon sa curriculum nila. Sabi ko sa kanila, sana si Senator Bato na lang yung uh, pinuntahan nyo. Hindi tuloy ako nakababa. So, I will fi I'll refile today but uh, Mr. Chair, uh, permit me to leave for a few minutes because I have to attend the uh, Commission on Appointments. I, but I will be back. I will be back before you adjourn because I have something to say concerning the what, what, what were the words that you mentioned? Softly breaking? Ano yun? Killing me softly? Paano ba yun? Breaking, breaking it to them gently. gently. I have break some, it to them gently. I have some uh, expanded version of breaking them gently. And I think I will be joined by J9 uh, in this endeavor. So, wabalik po ako, Mr. Chair, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Your Honor, Senator Tolentino. By the way, yung sinabi mong bill na different yung sayo, iba ka at yun din yung sa aking version because sayo nga, PNP lang ang concern mo. Sa akin, sinama ko yung Coast Guard, yung BGMP, yung Bureau of Fire. Meron na rin silang reserve force na isama natin. I try to visit, to my, visit my uh, version and uh, makita mo. Um, thank you, Happy Your Honor. Honor. Thank you. So, from here, ba balik ka ha? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pabir, uh, let's give the floor to Senator Robin Hood Padilla, another author of uh, these bills that we are tackling uh, today. Ma magandang magandang uh, umaga po, Ma mahal naming uh, pinakamatigas na senador po, Sen Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, idol, magandang uh, umaga po. At sa atin pong uh, pinakamatalino na senador, kapag... Uh, Kontra yata ito sa akin, ah. namamatay mag-isa. Uh, ang atin pong hinahangaan na uh, Senator Win Gatsalyan, magandang umaga po. At si, lumabas na yung pinakamagaling din magsalita. Senator Tolentino, magandang umaga po. At sa lahat po ng mga kapatid namin, Senator Online, magandang umaga po. At sa lahat po ng ating mga bisita, isang magandang maganda at uh, maaliwalas na umaga po sa inyo. Ako po ay uh, meron din pong bill patungkol po dito sapagkat ako po ay uh, naniniwala dito sa ROTC. Pwede ko po ba itong basahin na uh, ating uh, idol? Yes, go ahead. You have the floor, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh sa ating pong uh, mahal na tagapangulo ng pandinig na ito, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sa mga kapwa po natin, Senador, na naririto ngayon, sa mga panauhin po ngayong umaga. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Hindi pa man po ako senador ng Republika ay nasa kamalayan na po ng inyong lingkod ang pagnanais na maibalik ang Reserve Officers Training Corps bilang requirement sa undergraduate degree o diploma program sa pampubliko at pribadong tertiary level na paralan. Kung kaya naman isa po sa mga pinakaunang panukalang batas na iniyain ng inyong lingkod ay ang Senate Bill Number no. 236 o ang Mandatory Reserve Officers Training Corps Act. Sa ilalim ng panukalang batas, ang basic ROTC program ay magkakaroon ng training sa mga sumusunod. Una, External and Territorial Defense. Hindi naman po kaila sa atin ang mga kinaharap na bantang panlabas ng ating bansa, bunsod ng tunggalian pagdating sa hangganan ng ating mga karagatan sa dagat kanluran ng Pilipinas. Gayun din, mga tensyong geopolitikal na nagaganap sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo na hindi man direkta ay may mga implikasyong hindi nating maaaring ipagwalang bahala bilang isang bansa. Naniniwala ako na nararapat lamang na maihanda natin ng ating mga kabataan 
upang matiyak ang siguridad ng Estado sa oras ng hingin nito ng pagkakataon. Pangalawa, kasanayan sa internal security, peace and order and public safety. Ang inyong lingkod ay buhay na saksi sa napakaraming panloob na banta sa siguridad at kaligtasan sa pang-araw-araw na buhay ng mga Pilipino. Pagdating sa mga isyu sa law and order, armed conflict, banta ng terorismo at iba pang transnational crimes. Kinakailangan natin ang mas maigting na puwersa upang hindi maging balakid ang mga ito sa ating kapayapaan at kaunlaran. Pangatlo, pagsasanay sa Disaster Risk Reduction and Management. Tulad ng aking nabanggit noon, malaki ang maitutulong ng disiplinado. Nagkakaisang paggalaw sa pagtugon sa mga kalamidad na halos naging pangkaraniwan na sa ating bansa. Hangad natin, na magkaroon ng organisadong grupo na aalalay sa pamahalaan upang sumagip ng buhay sa panahon ng sakuna. Panghuli, kasanayan sa human rights and humanitarian law. Isa po ito sa naiibang sangkap ng panukalang batas na ating hinihain dito sa mataas na kapulungan. Naniniwala ang inyong lingkod na magiging napakahalagang sangkap po ng mandatory reserve Officers Training Corps, alaman sa pagtataguyod ng karapatang pantao, kaalinsabay ng pagsasanay para sa ating National Defense Program. Nais po nating linawin na exempted sa programa ang mga physically or mentally unfit to render military service and persons with disability at mga na-convict sa criminal offenses involving moral turpitude. Aray ko po, De, meron na po akong uh, absolute pardon. Accepted din ang mga may issue dahil sa pananampalataya at mga dumaan na sa similar military training from a previous undergraduate degree or diploma program. Bilang alternatibo sa mga exemptions na ito, ay naglagay din po tayo ng provision tungkol sa programa sa Special National Service Training na binubuo ng mga sumusunod. Literacy Training Service Program, Civic Welfare Training Service Program, Emergency Life Support Training Service Program, Search and Rescue Training Program, at ang pinakahuli na ito po ang isyo sa ngayon. Ang ating pong idinagdag sa ating bersyon ang Community Service for Drug Rehabilitation. Bilang pangwakas, nakasaad sa mismong saligang batas ang tungkuling itanim sa mga kabataan, ang pagkamakabayan at nasyonalismo. Gayun din ang paghikayat sa kanilang pakikilahok sa mga gawain pampubliko at sibiko. Dahilan po ito, hangad ko ang isang malaya at produktibong talakayan sa ating pagdinig ngayong umaga. Maraming salamat po, mahal na tagapangulo. Aba, itutuloy ko na po. Oh, si yata ang vice chairman ito. Uh, habang wala pa po ang ating mahal na tagapangulo, Meron po tayong isang problema ngayon eh. Uh, yung pong patungkol sa kulang tayo sa nurses. Dapat siguro isama na rin natin yun. Oo, no? Mahala taga Pangulo, natapos na po ako. Aba. Thank you, ha, Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Attorney Spooky for Roland of uh, Ched. Attorney. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and also, Yusek uh, Ronald Cardema, the nemesis of uh, uh, people who are anti-nation uh, building. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
from here, uh, pwedeng unahin muna natin yung uh, CHED for the presentation kasi according to them, meron daw silang uh, pinagbuong uh, united effort sa lahat ng mga uh, agencies in, involved dito sa ROTC. I-present nila yung kanilang uh, version. So, are you ready, uh, Yusek? Sir, uh, Director Lancer. I... Uh, Sige lang. Thank you for the promotion, but uh, it's on the director. <laughs> Sige lang. Uh, okay. Sir, uh, attorney Spocky Farolan, from the, I'm the head of legal and legislative service of the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, what we actually do have, a, with the indulgence and, uh, of course, in due recognition of the other agencies involved, especially uh, the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office, the DED, uh, the AFP, uh, TESDA, and I think DepEd was also present in the meeting, and other uh, agencies who were part of the consultation conducted and organized by the PLLO. As of yesterday, after a long series on the a series of discussions, we actually have come up with a compromise uh, bill, a, co a consensus. <laughs> we would rather call it, <laughs> we would rather use the term consensus. Uh, a consensus bill for uh, that would. Um, more or less captured the intent of our president, which when he mentioned in his sauna the the reform the reform the reforming the NSTP law as we have right now and the return of a program similar to the ROTC, which will focus on the RRM and other civic duty related uh, uh, concerns. And um, what we have right now, I provided a copy to uh, the member of your office staff. I. I I don't know if we're going to present it uh, on on the screen. If we're going, to, uh, but before before being presented on the screen, Your Honor, we could give you a brief summary of the content, uh, just the salient points. Um, it will be institution. Uh, the bill actually is will be institutionalizing if passed a two-year mandatory national citizen service training program in tertiary education. Uh, when we say tertiary education, it includes higher education, so baccalaureate degrees, and uh, uh, other post-secondary courses like, which are offered by TESDA, but would cover only those which extend up to two years at least. So yung mga TESDA trainings po na from two years onwards, kasi may mga three-year TESDA programs din po, would be, uh, students under it would be covered by by, by this program, uh, this NCST. But there is a provision in this uh, proposal that uh, special seminars would also be conducted, special citizen service seminars and programs would be developed, formulated, and designed to also ensure that those who are, ta uh, those who are taking up uh, test the courses or training courses which are less than two years, especially those taking up the NC2 courses, would also be subjected to some sort of training or orientation uh, in the in our citizen service uh, program, and uh, they will eventually also be part. They can be part of our pool of volunteers and uh, and uh, human resource when it comes to a national emergency or any national need. So, uh, so it would be a two-year program offered in the tertiary education. But there will be a four-year optional ROTC program. The four-year optional ROTC program, uh, it would all really be geared towards producing officers in the re for the regular and reserve force. Of course, uh, for the conversion of the officers into regular force, the uh, regular for regular commission, there would be other uh, requirements as the DND or AFP may prescribe. But the the concept would be having a four-year uh, ROTC course. So. Uh, the dis we didn't make any distinction between a basic ROTC, advanced ROTC, unlike before. Now, the ROTC program is a four-year program. So it's really designed to make officers for our reserve uh, citizen armed forces. <clears throat> then the curriculum for our national citizen service training would be developed by a uh, NCST technical panel, uh, which would be multi-agency with representatives from private uh, relevant national uh, organizations to decide, uh, which would design and periodically update the curriculum. But the focus of the curriculum, uh, and we do have a list of the subjects, of the proposed subjects for it, uh, would be on practical and uh, truly useful competencies and skills 
in civic duty, individual survival and safety skills, mass community mass slash community emergency and uh, disaster response and management and citizen soldier training. So in those two years, the 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 student, the trainee, or what we call the citizen uh, the uh, citizen cadet, as we would call those who would undergo the NCST, would undergo training that would be both military and non-military. Uh, they would be subjected to the skills, individual skills, which would be useful for them even in time uh, in in peacetime or especially in times of emergencies and disasters um, once they graduate from the two year program so both male and female students would be covered under this uh, once they are um, once they finish the two year course uh, they will be issued two serial numbers it will be a dual registration system uh, they would be registered under the national service reserve corps which is an existing uh, an existing agrupation right now under the OCD, which would be in charge of their mobilization for non-combat and non-military uh, activities. But they will also be issued serial numbers for the AFP, Citizens Armed Force, because they will also be deemed as members of the Citizens Armed Force, or what we refer to also as the AFP Reserve Force, and they will be given military serial numbers for military or combat purposes uh, reserve, uh, Deployment, uh, your honors. So, once they uh, once they are registered, the deployment, uh, the monitoring of the training would be done by a national uh, citizen service citizen service training monitoring and oversight committee, uh, which would be chaired by Ched, uh, vice chaired by the DND, uh, with members coming from TESDA, the NYC, the DSWD, the DILG, and uh, two representatives from. Uh, uh, na relevant national organizations to ensure that uh, all complaints are also attended to, that there will be no abuses, that uh, inspections are conducted, surprise inspections especially, and uh, all other uh, possible abuses are immediately investigated with the power to call on agencies to, um, to compel agencies to conduct investigation necessary to ensure that uh, none of the evils that we saw in the previous programs are... are uh, our experience, or at least they are prevented or immediately addressed, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, essentially, that's uh, that's the coverage of the program. As you would see, it covers uh, generally the training of the program. We saw the importance of making sure that we touch on the training, which is the primary purpose of this program, ensuring a citizen service training program that will ensure that uh, to give... Uh, to give uh, life to that spirit, of, uh, to the provision of the constitution, which gives the state the power and authority to call upon its citizens to render personal military or personal civil service. So, uh, uh, so ang takbun ni punito, sir, we're running on the principle that if the government or if the state is going to use this provision of the constitution, it has also the responsibility to ensure that the proper training is provided our uh, our youth if they are going to be utilized by the state for this. And at the same time, it should be something that is relevant. And the focus here is more on voluntarism rather than being uh, than the mandatory nature of the uh, provision on citizen service, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, that's a broad uh, description of the provisions of the program. Uh, this were this uh, bill, this uh, consensus bill is a product of uh, an assessment and review of existing legislation and proposals also passed. Uh, we have taken into consideration the need also, as mentioned, by the need of other agencies. Uh, where do we get, for example, the PNP Auxiliary, Coast Guard Auxiliary? Uh, they are actually non-military, so they can actually form part of the programs that can be devised by the Office of Civil Defense or the NDRRMC through the Office of Civil Defense in uh, the mobilization of uh, our, what we call the National Service Reservist, the NSRs. So we have two kinds of reservists. So isang tao po can be an NSR, a National Service Reservist, for non-military and non-combat uh, deployment. And they are also citizen soldiers, which is the proper term used in Republic Act 077 uh, for military deployment, sir. So that is all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Director uh, Smokey Farulan. Hindi ko pa nabasa itong kwan, itong, kasi ngayon lang binigay sa akin itong uh, version ninyo, pero 
I just would like to be clarified. The term mandatory and jan pa rin. Uh, yeah, uh, Ms. Mandatory to all it tertiary is, level students before they can graduate the course. Yes, Mr. Chair. There is a provision ensuring that this is mandatory to all our uh, students, all male and female students. In fact, we don't, under this law, we don't actually give exemptions. Uh, when in other bills, they exempted those who are uh, PWDs, those who are with disabilities, or those who were uh, one of the concerns raised by our se good senator, Senator Padilla, those who were convicted of uh, by final judgment. We are not, we have removed all exceptions, but the colatilia is that they will, they will undergo a special, uh, a special NCST program designed for them based on their special needs. So even those who may, f uh, we are not leaving out anyone. No one is left behind when it comes to uh, serving the country and uh, the state and the people, Mr. Chair. So thank you. Thank you very much. Tama -tama yan because yung uh, religions na nagbabawal sa kanilang mga uh, tao na humawak ng baril at magipaglaban, they can offer that uh, yung sa disaster uh, preparedness uh, program or uh, how do you call it, uh, maganda po yun. So tama yun na wala exemption. So thank you for that, uh, uh, Director uh, Parolan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next, uh, may we hear from DND? Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, distinguished uh, senators and other members of uh, this committee. Uh, yes, sir, we fully, at the Defense Department, we fully agree with uh, the quotation that you had regarding preparedness. And uh, we also believe that if you love peace, you have to prepare to defend it. And uh, peace is not only disrupted by armed conflict, but also by natural disaster. And uh, the consensus bill that we are proposing has actually captured all the spirits of the the law that was uh, or the bills that were passed by all the good senators and uh, personally from the defense department would like to thank all the senators that have filed the bills reinstituting uh, the ROTC in uh, in, in its uh, in on its form. So the consensus bill that we are that uh, director. Uh, Parolan just uh, mentioned is a conglomeration of all the good features of all the filed Senate bill and uh, created a consensus that would capture all the, the spirit of the bill, sir, para walang may iiwan. So yung pinopropose namin ngayon, sir, is a consolidation of uh, all the bills. Uh, yung, just to explain a little bit more regarding dun sa tertiary level, sir, there is a the two year course is intended to generate uh, the reserve force. Ito po yung mga mga sundalo, uh, uh, mobilizable po in times of emergencies and uh, in times of war. Yung pong four year course are for those people who are intending to, to join the officer's score in the future. Kaya po siya four years course. Bali dala, there we have two tracks, one for the first two years, first and second year. These are for the reserve component na mga sundalo na hindi walang plano mag later on. And a four-year course, uh, this is uh, mandatory ROTC. Na, pwede natin tawagin mandatory ROTC. Now, after they graduate from the four-year course uh, and na part ng ROTC, they would be commissioned as reserve officer in the reserve force and if they want to join the regular force they would have to undergo a selection and a pre-deployment training and that would qualify them to become regular officer wala na po yung distinction ngayon na regular at saka yung reserve so kahit galing nga po na ROTC once you intend to become part of the active service you undergo yung selection and the pre-training and you would become a regular officer of the armed force of the Philippines. So yung pong intent natin to have a mobilizable cit red citizen ready for any contingencies and a source of officer for the armed force of the Philippines uh, are captured in the consensus bill that we are proposing. And to just to complete the picture, sir, uh, our the DND and our, uh, with the indulgence of uh, DepEd, uh, with your permission, sir, may I discuss yung napag-usapan natin, sir, regarding sa grades 11 and 12. Uh, 
sa grades 11 and 12 sir it will not be there will always be there will be a program that would uh prepare our 11s and 12 for for the ROTC or for the military training that they would undergo when they go into the tertiary. So the intent of the 11 and 12 is not to really create uh, child soldiers like uh, what the critics are saying, that uh, if we institute ROTC in the 11s and 12, we are creating child soldiers. So the, the program would be for the 11s and 12 is, is a sort of a citizenship development training that would introduce to the 11s and 12 uh, how to become a good citizen, how to follow law. Uh, there would be subject on, it's like a part, Boy Scout uh, sort of training. There would be drug awareness, uh, community service, a little bit of survival skill. And the only military portion of this is focused on the military history of the Philippine military that is in uh, intently focused po on the role of the youth during times of emergency and during times of conflict. So we would be discussing as part of the military history or those role of the youth during World War II, a party like, for example, the classes of the war classes of PMA, where the first and second year cadet went to Bataan, the third, the, the yearlings and the fourth class men were disbanded, but they went on to fight creating the Hunters ROTC guerrilla. So these are the youth that fought for the country when the time that they were needed. So in the highlight of the program for the grades 11 and 12 is a visit to our battle sites, like in Mount Samat, where a veteran, a 93-year-old veteran, if he's still able, he would relate when he was 16 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old, he fought for the country during the time. The intent of the program for the 11 and 12 is to prepare the youth to become good citizen and instill nationalism that would instill in them that the idea that they have a role to play in the defense of the country in terms of disaster and in times of war so that when they undergo the ROTC training, whether it is the two years or the four year course, they will be prepared Passionately, kumbaga ready po yung puso nila at kaisipan nila na hindi ito pahirap itong ROTC na to, but ito, ito ay uh, katungkulan o responsibilidad ko bilang isang mamamayang Pilipino ipagtanggol ang Pilipinas sa anumang pagkakataon sa, sa sakunaman o sa panahon ng digmaan. So generally po, uh, yung from 11 and 12 hanggang tertiary is nakover po natin yung essence ng mga final po na Senate Bill ng ating mga magigiting na mga senador para buhayin po yung ROTC. Maraming salamat po. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, alam nyo, yung during our time, di ba, before ka mag-college, yung Portier High School ka, meron tayong CAT, yeah? uh, Citizens Army Training, then pag-college mo, saka ka mag-ROTC. Pero tanong ko lang dyan sa verso ninyo, since uh, parang binigyan nyo ng leeway, yung isang estudyante na pwedeng mag-focus siya sa military training or sa ano yung isa? Yung sa disaster preparedness ba yun? Ay yung sa, uh, we call it civil defense. Civil uh, defense. And other uh, non-military, non-combat uh, 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 yeah. uh, activities, Mr. Chair. Pero yung two, year, yung two years na yan, doon sila pwede maghiwalay? If, yeah. if I may, Mr. Yes. Chair. Actually, the, in the two, the two year program, everybody would go through it. So they will. Everyone will be trained to be civil servants. Everyone will train be trained to be soldiers. So you, the the state under this NCST program, be bigay sa you lahat ng pwede mong matutunan na practical skills, including swimming, survival, and okay, rescue okay, swimming. Okay, 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 But after those two years, if you want to pursue uh, being an officer in the military, pwede ka po yung uh, ROTC, the optional ROTC, Thank or. <laughs> Pwede rin sir na ano, i-ano ko lang sir na under the NSRC also, pwede, pwedeng magkaroon ng tie up ang OCD with the Philippine Coast Guard, PNP, uh, BJMP to produce other possible uh, avenues for the development of officers in those uh, okay. agencies, Mr. Chair. So thank you, thank you for that clarification. Dahil nga, just to allay the fears of uh, those yung mga diehard na ROTC talaga na baka sabihin nila na, Uh, yung version ninyo, nawawala yung ROTC. Terminology lang yung uh, pinalit natin. So, okay. Uh, we we prefer na yung... Si, yung mga retired generals natin. Oh. Nag-iisip sila. 
Nandito ah. kami para sa RTC tapos nawawala yung RTC. <laughs> yun, tama yun. Very good, we, we, very good we, explanation. We prefer the use of the term citizen soldiers. Citizen soldiers. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Attorney Parulan. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Bongo. Uh, you want to, you have a final statement? Later. Thank you. Uh, so next, uh, we would like to listen to Armed Forces. You want to say something, AAP? Uh, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, actually, we are aligned with what uh, Yusek uh, Madriaga said. Uh, kasi naging consensus bill uh, discussion naman po yung nangyari, sir. And uh, nakapture naman din yung uh, sa AFP, sir. Thank you, sir. In, hindi tayo pwede magkakaroon ng, um, ng uh, defense establishment na hindi aligned, di ba? <laughs> Dapat aligned kayo. Otherwise, basimasi kayo after, uh, after basin review. <laughs> Thank you. Salamat. Uh, would like to hear from uh, Attorney Gilbert uh, Raymond uh, Rieser, the UP Vanguard Incorporated the Chairman Emeritus, uh, UP Vanguard. Uh, sir, you have the floor. We want to hear from you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Senator Padilla, Senator Gachalian, Senator Go, and the Honorable Chair. Uh, Actually, we've gone through all of these suggestions, and the biggest uh, input that we express elation over from the 17th and 18th Congress is now there is no raging dispute of where to lodge the ROTC. Uh, there was so much discussion over grades 11 and 12, and as uh, very ably discussed by Senator Gachalian, there are, in fact, also compelling reasons uh, that for us to now, with the changing circumstances, uh, to more seriously consider tertiary education as the CITUS for the citizen service training. Now, in, in, in all of these, in all of the bills no, by Senator Padilla, by Senator um, Estrada and Senator De La Rosa, uh, they, are, they, they, are, they all basically uh, espouse three basic concepts. The first one, of course, is that it is not all about military preparedness or territorial defense. It is just as important that these students, these, our, our youth, learn the skills necessary for immediate in-place deployment in case of disaster. Uh, a disaster will happen more certainly than an invasion from whatever country. The last one, of course, is peace and order. Uh, there is so much in our streets right now that call for the involvement of the, the youth in uh, peace and order situations without being police. The PNP has its job, and I think as the Director General of the PNP, Senator Bato knows exactly what I mean. But there are matters that the deployment of a reserve a reserve component, or even just students you know, deployed uh, under this training can be used, uh, can be very useful to the country. And because of this, the, this, the citizen service program needs to capture all of these three into one. So that at the end of the day, uh, anyone who undergoes the citizen service training program is equipped completely to be able to act as in disasters, peace and order, and military if necessary now we we mentioned this because it's this is the need this is the nature of the uh, much has been said about no, especially because the the famous bts band in, uh, in korea no yan, they went into military service but that's the that is the model in those countries because they are basically in a state of war in times of peace no, the demilitarized zone in Korea and the Israelites the, in Israel, they need it. Uh, but we don't necessarily need that. No? Uh, yes, there are irritants in certain areas of the country in the South China Sea, but we don't really need to prepare exactly just for that. What we need is actually to have our citizens ready to help. No? When the undois come and when earthquakes come, and more importantly, when there are uh, civil, there are civil unrest, no? Kanina uh, nabangit po yung terrorism. While that is also a law and order problem, terrorism is very special. And you don't need the military to come into that. 
that is not a military action. By its, by its nature, it is not military unless you're fighting it as unconventional. Uh, in the universal police parlance, it is a law enforcement problem, not a military problem. Anywhere you go in the world, they say it's not a military problem. That's a law enforcement problem, police problem. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Exactly, sir. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, Mr. Chairman. Opo. Go ahead, sir. Oh, or, uh, Rubino Padilla. Pingit lang po ako. Uh, nagiging terrorism problem po ito kasi sa recruitment. Kapag uh, hindi po natin na uh, ihanda yung ating mga kabataan na sila po eh, magmahal sa kanilang bayan at sila po ay dapat magserbisyo ng voluntaryo sa kanilang bayan, eh may pag-asa po ito na ma-recruit ng mga terorista. Nakita na po natin yan sa Marawi at nakikita po natin yan nagagawa ng mga teroristang komunista. At, uh, exactly. I, 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 I agree with you, si, uh, Your Honor. Opo, katulad din po kanina, madagdag ko lang po. Sorry po, naputol ko po kayo, Sir. UP Vanguard, tagahanga niyo po ako. Ang kapatid ko po ay dating ganyan, maganda yung sombrero niya eh. Opo. Sinusuot ko pa yun, pag naglaro ako, nagagalit siya. Kinakatok ako, tigas nun eh. Kinawa mong paglaruan yan. Sabi niya, ano, alala ko lang po. Nabanggit pa po kanina, sorry po Mr. Chairman, na ano yun ko lang po. Uh, baka po pwede po na idagdag po ni Undersecretary Ignacio Madriaga. Kasi nung ako po ay nasa Philippine Army Strategic Communication, na pag-usapan po namin dati yung uh, paghukay pa ng kasaysayan ng ating mga bayaning kabataan. Uh, kaya po ako naatasan nun na gumawa ng isang dokumentaryo na patungkol po sa katipunan. Nayaan din po ang uh, insinya ng ating Philippine Army, ng ating Armed Forces po, ano, insinya ng katipunan, na huwag nating hayaan na uh, itong ating mga bayani ng katipunan ay makuha unin ng kalaban. Kailangan ito ariin natin sapagkat ang katipunan iyan po ang continuation ng ating armed forces. At uh, kaya po sana sir, mailagay din po natin na uh, huwag alam ko po ROTC kasi ROTC ang pangalan may kinalaman sa World War II opo, pero sana mas bukayin nyo pa po ng ating mga bayani, katulad po nila Emilio Jacinto, mga kabataan po yan, Gregorio Del Pilar, talagang mga bata po yan na talagang naniwala po sa pagtatanggol ng ating bansa. At uh, wag po tayong hayaan natin na i-claim siya ng mga terorista na sila ay doon nakabahagi. Hindi po tayo dapat pumayag. Dapat po ipaglaban natin na ang katipunan ang nagtutuloy po niyan ngayon ay ang Armed Forces of the Philippines. Yung lamang po, sir. Na maraming salamat po, Chairman. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, alam ko yung pinaghugutan mo. Uh, alam natin na kapag mahina ang ROTC program ng isang universidad, ituwang-tuwa eh, yung mga tagakaliwa dahil uh, sila ang libring-libre na, na nagre-recruit ng uh, mga kabataan doon eh, hindi yung ating uh, armed forces so I agree with you definitely I would like to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator J.B. Ercito Sir, uh, you want to deliver your opening statement? Uh, then uh, we will go back to you sir please uh, pakinggan mo natin si you, sir, Senator J.B. dahil uh, commission appointment ito uh, pupunta dito babalik agad doon sa si Please, uh, you have the floor, uh, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody, to our uh, my colleagues, uh, resource persons. Tama kayo, meron po kami si Ingi, but uh, in fact, I am one of those who filed also this bill uh, uh, on ROTC because, um, Sir Chair, I'm 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 proud to say that I'm a product of uh, the ROTC. No, hindi po ako nagpa-exempt nung uh, college. I, I undertook two years of training uh Kahit nang tatay ko nung senador na nag-vice president, pwede ako magpa-exempt. Pero hindi po. I took the training uh, seriously. Kahit na nag-billiad tayo sa Fort Bonifacio, sa, sa Bill ng De La Salnon. And I think I, uh, that experience really helped me. I think it really helped me mold uh, me for what I am today. Instill discipline, instill the patriotism. Iba po yung may bandera ka sa iyong uh, dibdib at uh, o kaya nasa iyong... Uh, Balika, uh, sa iyong braso, 
iba yung pakiramdam and uh, it also te- teaches you respect for persons in authority so i think i i i would just, i would really value that experience kahit na ako uh, nabilad ng dalawang taon nasunog hanggang ngayon din na bumalik ang kulay ko pero just the same i uh, mr chairman i uh, really strongly uh, believe in the ROTC because uh, uh, I, for the reasons that I have stated. Um, Mr. Chairman, that's all. Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor, Senator J.B. Ejercito. Uh, as we have discussed, uh, he is one of the authors of uh, these bills that we are tackling uh, right now. Sir, we would like to go back to you. Hindi ka natapos kanina, Attorney Reyes. Please continue, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, timing na timing po yung pagdating ni Senator J.B. Ejercito. Maybe I can segue already to basically just formulating for the good senators the what the what the UP Vanguard has been advocating for the past two years, uh, and the citizen service training program. In all the other bills that are pending, they will either be administered by the DND or in the last so-called consensus uh, legislation, will be administered by a committee headed by the CHED. Uh, in the view of the of the UP Vanguard, it is our uh, considered uh, recommendation that this is best performed by an independent commission, as suggested in the bill of Senator J V Bautis, uh, J V uh, Ejercito. Uh, the primary reason for this is basically the concept of a single point of responsibility. Madami na po kasing trabaho ang DND, ang CHED and TESDA, and DSWD, lahat po sila, they have missions that are been embedded into their systems, their personnel, and all of that. Now, if we inject this, even with respect to the DND and the, uh, or, the test, or the CHED, these agencies will actually still have to reorganize completely and retool and restaff. This is exactly what will an independent commission will do. So our proposal, Your, uh, Your Honor, is that there will be an independent commission to be appointed by the president, but all of the stakeholders that were mentioned earlier are part of that commission. They will be part of that commission. So the all decisions made will involve all of those stakeholders, but there will be a, a permanent member of five who will actually be the ones on a day-to-day basis looking at the discharge of their functions. Lahat po nung pinagbabanggit po natin, kaya po natin refinement dyan eh. We can refine those because we obviously cannot come up with a perfect program at the outset. But we can do it as best we can. So it, w- when we expand, that's the necessary consequence. Because before, ang alam po natin lahat ay ang military training lang po. Yun din po dinaanan namin eh. Apat na taong po ako nag-ROTC. I am, a reserve, I, am, I am actually an advanced course graduate. During our time, that's what we did. And it was purely military. But even then, and, and especially during the NSTP period, when we realized, dung po tayo tinamaan ng mahigit dalawampung bagyo every year. Eh. Yung, yung, period, yung 16 years ng NSTP na yan. And then we had earthquakes, we had volcanoes, uh, volcanic eruptions. And this is what we mean when we say we expand. We expand so that all, all those who undergo this training at the tertiary level will be actually equipped to react to disasters wherever they may be. If they are not mob, uh, mobilized, they are already there. And there is also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Senator, um, sabi nga po nyo, mas maganda kung walang exemption. It, because this is the, the challenge is for this commission to come up with programs with POIs that are dedicated to the disability that makes you unable to join the regular uh, citizen service training program. And, uh, and since we're all agreed now that it will be at the college level, we can also agree, as we have previously suggested, that at the levels of grades 11 and 12, what can be put in that area would be the preparatory steps. So that by the time they enter the tertiary level for mandatory ROTC, they are not starting from scratch. Marunong na po silang magmarcha, marunong na po sila ng basic, uh, basic uh, concepts, and they will. Ha- we can now introduce more there, no? Problem, of course, would be uh, the CHED has intimated uh, many times na ang grades in 11 and 12, punong-puno na po yung curriculum niyan ngayon. Pag dinagdagan daw po natin, 
baka sila na po ang magkadapa-dapa para ma-implement. But I think we can do it. Uh, because there will be others who will help, no? Especially if the curriculum can be developed somewhere else, as in the commission that we are proposing. And that's why we are asking for an independent commission rather than giving this responsibility to either a department or a committee of departments and government instrumentalities who already have jobs. The commission will have none. This is its only job. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that. Maganda po yung suggestions ninyo. Uh, alam niyo yung hindi lang yung uh, preparatory no dapat talaga pati yung boy scout pa doon sa grade 1 2 3 4 kasi doon tayo nag-start ng mag mag march eh uh, left face right face about face doon sa boy scout napakaimportante po yun but anyway uh, i would like to hear from Mamaya, so itong mga government agencies, itong mga retired muna dahil uh, kanina pa itong uh, naghihintay, mabigyan natin ang uh, chance. Sir, uh, sino mo na sir? General Salazar? Sir, you have the floor. Sir, good morning. Uh, yung grupo po namin, 2013 po po kami, ano, no, I was a former J9 of the Armed Forces of the Philippines. There were earlier study, studies about the RC program. Uh, yung sabi nyo nga sir, maganda yung scouting sa bata pa lang because that is our that is how our constitution is. Starting at age of 10, we will train our our youth to become future leaders. And that is why may scouting program tayo na nagkasala si ma'am ang scouting program na wala. May ROTC tayo, may YDT pa nung una, si 80 ROTC. Um, nag, nag, nagkasala, nagkasala yung pamatay kay Chua, ang ROTC program nagiging optional. But, we should all know, it is the defense of the state, yung nasa constitution. And it is not voluntary. It is a requirement for every citizen to render military or non-military service to the republic. And then, hindi siya optional. Naging optional eh, ang NSTP. So the defense of the state become optional. The reason why we would like this to be clear. Likewise, RE77, ang pinalit, uh, hindi lahat doon nasunod kasi. So, sa amin lang, uh, sa group namin, started to join sa DND 2013, even the ex-senator Manny Pacquiao made mention about senior high, that is already our stand. Because, uh, I, I think it is wrong also to say na we will be exporting child warrior. No, definitely no. If we will try to use our basic mathematics, it's definitely no. So, I have here with me Jal Garcia and Jal Calonso. Uh, Jal Garcia, will, our lawyer, will explain further, sir, on why we choose RC program in the senior high, not in the college. Because in the college, dapat, yun na yung parang America, sir, na Yung, yung scholar na ng gobyerno para pa-graduate, yun yung magiging officer. And he can choose whether to become part of the regular force or to the reserve force. Kasi kailangan natin yun, sir, eh, na mamintay ng organization. And then, yung mga pinag-usapan na pang-disaster, yung ano. Uh, sir, katatapos ko lang, sir, last Wednesday, nag-retire pa ako sa OCD. Magandang pangarap, sir, pero yung oras na binibigay, yung two years lang, tapos once a week, mga panaginip po yun, sir. So, <laughs> I stayed more than five years sa OCD, sir. I came from the regular force, so alam ko po yung mga ano. So, uh, I think my good friend here can explain more further. Magandang umaga po, sir. Magandang umaga po sa lahat. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat for that insight. Sir, you have the floor, uh, General Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Magandang umaga po, uh, Senator Go, Senator Padilla, and to uh, everybody here, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Kasama po namin si uh, General Calonso, siya po ay uh, Doctor of uh, Education. Si General Salazar was former J9, and I am a lawyer. I've been in the service. I was tasked to study Republic Act 7077. I, I would like to say, sir, that uh, uh, reviving... Excuse me for a while. General Salazar, sir, anong year ka nag-G9? It's all 2013, sir. Ah, kuha na pala. Little part na pala. Akala ko noon pa. 
nung uh, anyway may kikwento lang ako sa mamaya sir uh, G9 is a uh, training ah reserve affair ah reserve yung G8 pala yung uh, training okay thank you sir sir please continue would, would so, like to sorry. say Mr. Chairman uh, ladies and gentlemen that uh, reviving ROTC has been a very steep climb for us since 2013 when we started the revival the move to revive ROTC. Hindi pa po batas yung senior high, doon na namin pinopropose na ilagay yung uh, mandatory basic ROTC. And uh, we, we can say that at this point, after two presidents have directed the revival of ROTC and we are all here talking about reviving it, we can claim that 50% of the battle have been won and the other uh, 50% that remains is that where are we going to put ROTC, is it in senior high school or is it in, in college? Sir, so our position is in senior high school and it is based on law. Uh, first, we would like to ask everybody here, kayo na lang po ang sumagot sa sarili ninyo. Usually what we do is when we ask the question, we ask them to write their answers. Kinukuha po namin para to validate kung tama yung aming position. So we ask everybody actually, why are we doing ROTC? Marami pong sagot eh. Uh, to develop patriotism, love of country, to develop leadership. It's a requirement for graduation, things like that. Ano po? So, uh, gusto po namin, ano, uh, we ask this question for a, may I proceed to click? Yes, Mr. Chairman, please. We ask this question for a clear understanding of the primary purpose of requiring our children to undergo ROTC. And in order to focus all our efforts in achieving the objective to the answer. Bakit natin ginagawa? Ngayon po ang daming mga proposal eh. We, we can see na marami tayong gustong gawin for, for little time that the children has to, what, what the children has to, to learn. The answer, ROTC, sirs, Mr. Chairman, ROTC is just a small portion of our reserve force development. It is an alternative basic military training for our boys and girls in school. The answer to the question, why are we doing ROTC, sir, can be found in our Constitution and in our National Defense Act. Specifically, these are... Number one, Section 4, Article 2, 1987 Constitution. The prime duty of government is to serve and protect the people. Alam na po natin lahat yan. Palagi itong nasa site, itong provision na ito. The government may call upon the people to defend the state. And in the fulfillment thereof, all citizens may be required under conditions provided by law to render personal, military, or civil service. The other provision, sir, is Section 4 also, Article 16, 1987 Constitution. The Armed Forces of the Philippines shall be composed of a citizen armed force which shall undergo military training and serve as may be provided by law. It shall keep a regular force necessary for the security of the state. And the last provision I will quote, Your Honor, is from Section, section 52 of Commonwealth Act Number no. 1, otherwise known as the National Defense Act of 1935. The obligation to undergo military training shall begin with the youth in school, commencing at the age of 10, and shall extend through his schooling until he shall have reached the age of 18 years. The intent of these provisions is the creation of a reliable and dependable reserve force that will augment our regular troops at any time that they are needed in times of war, invasion, rebellion, and to assist during national or local emergencies such as calamities, etc. The reserve force shall be composed of our youths whose patriotism, love of country, loyalty to the Constitution has been inculcated in their youth starting from age 10 continuously in school until they reach the age of 18. The intent of the basic law is the creation of a huge reserve force 
composed of practically all able Filipinos, the Citizen Armed Force. In 1991, four years after the ratification of the 1987 Constitution, Congress enacted the Republic Act 7077, the enabling law of the cited constitutional provisions that will implement its mandates. Organization of the reserve force is only through compulsory citizens military training or CCMT for short. Lahat po yan. Whether you're in school, you're out of school, you are working, you are a cigarette vendor, you're a tricycle driver, you will have to undergo CCMT. The first call for mandatory general registration was supposed to be in 1992. And every two years up to the present. Those what, chosen by the board what of... What happened, sir? What happened? Hindi po na implement, sir. Which is why right now, I think there is... This law has been passed. Very nice, beautiful law apply, that applies to reserve force development has not been really, really... Uh, Applied and implemented. Kaya sir, ano mo? Partly, we partly to be blamed rin tayo. Tayo ng nag-implement yan. Tayo sa armed forces. Those who bakit hindi yan na implement? Dahil na sa batas na eh. Hindi pa implement. At sa ka, balik ang ko yung sinabi ni General Salazar kanina. Yung parang suntok sa buwan yan. Dahil one day lang yung arotesi sa sa bado lang. Anong ma Gusto ninyo, jack of, magiging jack of all trades lahat ng kabataan natin. Marunong na sa military sticks, marunong na rin sa, sa ano ito, yung uh, mga relief operations, mga disaster management, parang sabi ni Sir. Alam mo Sir, kaya ito ininject. Dahil nga, partly to be blamed rin tayo. Lalo na yung mga dating mga komandant natin sa ROTC na pag birnis na ng gabi, pupuntahan ng mga estudyante. Lasingin natin si Komandant para bukas isi-isi tayo. Pag nalasing si Komandant ngayon, kinabukasan, ang mga ROTC cadets natutulog lang sa ilalim ng ilalim ng puno ng kahoy. Pag alasing ko ng hapon, dismiss. Wala nangyari sa one day nila. Kaya partly to be rin tayo. Kaya magus maraming gusto mag-introduce ng reform sa ROTC program. Kaya sinaksak yung mga, yung mga disaster relief operations, lahat-lahat. Yes, sir. Sir, with, sir with, abalikan lang kita, sir. Ha? With, with okay. due respect, sir, yung pag-implement kasi ng RS-7, may role kasi ang LGU na malaki, sir. DILG, sir. May mga role doon, sir, kasi dapat, sir, yung mastering, sir, ng mga pangalan, sir, doon sa local civil registrar. Yung magtatawag, sir, yung LGU, sir. DILG po, sir, hindi armed forces. Ang armed forces, sir, magtitraining lang po, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, nakuha kita, nakita, nakuha kita at saka alam ko sentimento mo kasi kung ano yung dinaanan mo, yun yung dinaanan ko eh. Alam na alam ko yung naramdaman mo. Kaya nga, babalik na naman tayo doon sa, sa suggestion ni Attorney Reyes na may komisyon para makatutok talaga dyan. Dahil yung komisyon na yan, siya mag-direct sa lahat ng involved. Uh, I don't know if this is experiment or what, pero let's give it a try. Uh, Bureau ng DND. Wala kasing cater sa reserve pro sa bureau sa DND, sir. Nandun lang sa Sebra, sir. Pero karamihan doon ang kinikater, sir, veterans. Pero yung reserve pro, sir, yung bureaucracy niya, sir, sinakop ng regular na ang regular busy sa away, dapat, sir, ihiwalay. Wala? Wala kayong bureau under this na nagkikater ng uh, ROTC? Sebra? Uh, uh, General uh, Salazar is correct, sir. Sibra, uh, sir, yung ano, sir, ang technically in charge, sir. Uh, it's a uh, civilian veteran retirees affairs. So, ang dami na nga problema sa mga veterans. Tapos, yes, ang ROTC, saksak ko pa dyan. Mapabayaan talaga ang ROTC. Uh, but if I may answer, despite the fact, sir, na walang specific na or dedicated na office that are looking into the reserve force development, but it's... It is being taken by by Sibra, sir, to look into the development. That's why, as in the DND right now, are also looking into the reserve force development of the armed forces of the Philippines because we know that is a very important component of the total force concept. So, although walang opisina, sir, but uh, it is not 
really accurate to say na walang tumitingin sir sa DND regarding sa reserve force development. Meron, pero konti lang, konting pagtingin. Hindi <laughs> lang. <laughs> anyway, yes. Okay, I got your point. Sir, please continue. General Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. As I was saying, sir, the first call for mandatory general registration was supposed to be in 1992 and every two years thereafter. Those chosen by the Board of Canvassers from among the registrants will be provided with basic military training similar to the program of instructions of a candidate soldier and entering our armed forces. This is in order to fulfill their mission of augmenting the regular force. The reserve force is subject to call at any time. So sir, kung augmentation ka, kailangan pareho ang training nyo. Yun yun sa ROTC is a ground to request for deferment from undergoing CCMT for two years while you are enrolled in school. Which is why I said earlier that it is an alternative military training for those who are in school. And later, Mr. Chairman, ROTC becomes a cost for exemption to CCMT upon successful completion of basic ROTC. Yes, uh, precisely. That's why yung punto ni Senator Win Gatsalian kanina, nakukover mo na rin dyan. Yung hindi mag-ROTC dapat para magamit sila, yung Sir, sabi mo, CC, CCMT. Magastos lang po yung Magastos talaga. CCMT. The, the, the ROTC in senior high school actually is going to answer a lot of problems that we will encounter when we eventually implement RA 7077 on the general registration and mandatory training of all our citizens between ages 18 to 25. This, 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 Your Honor, what we are telling you now is actually based on law and based on the Constitution, why we are doing ROTC. So graduates of basic ROTC become part of the reserve force upon the attainment of 18 years of age. The NARAA model of mandatory basic ROTC, sir, has two components. Number one, first we train the trainers. Those who will run the program must undergo and must complete the train the trainers program. If you don't know about ROTC, the, the ROTC, the new ROTC program, you have no business running it. So that the guy running ROTC in Batanes will run the same ROTC in Tawi-Tawi. The second part, Your Honor, is that is when we run the program. The NARAA model of basic ROTC will require the student to take four hours of classroom instruction every week and pass the subject like any other subject. Tutuhanan po ito na training, talagang mag-aaral ka, and you're going to get experts from the field pagka pinag-uusapan na natin eh, tungkol sa infantry, etc. Yung mga ganon. MS-11 will be offered in grade 11, MS-12 for grade 12. There will, be, there will still be limited formation during weekends to learn basic drills and ceremonies. There will be field training exercise for two consecutive summers, boot camp to sir, where the students will learn the actual application of the theories they learned in, school, in the classroom. Details of the curriculum and other requirements can be discussed in detail at a later time. Mr. Chairman, other than basic soldiery, the students will learn discipline, leadership, punctuality, responsibility, and reliability, but not humanitarian assistance, and public safety, which are better learned when they are already part of the reserve. We consider humanitarian assistance and disaster relief a very serious matter, Your Honor. To send our boys to do this by just teaching them a few hours of what disaster is, they will not help them. It's going to expose them to unnecessary danger. Humanitarian assistance and disaster relief and public safety are better learned when they are already part of the reserve, where they will be trained and equipped as a unit. Specialized po, sir. Hindi kahit ano suntok sa buwan gagawin mo eh. Magtitraining ka for fire, for fire lang kayo, for, for earthquake, for collapse building, for flood, for whatever. Basta si Bernie kasama pa. Pero specialized training, sir, hindi yung tuturuan mo lang ng kung anong units, ilang, ilang idea about HADR, and then you expect these boys, you send your boys to do that, hindi, hindi naman po prepared. They must be trained, they must be equipped, they know who's going to run the show and what, what role they are going to play. Hindi po konting 
blabla lang sa classroom. We want to inject so many in, in a very few hours. Basic ROTC po is simply basic soldiery. After they become part of the reserve, then you can teach them all the other things so that they can accomplish their mission after that. In line with the purpose and objective of K-12 program, graduates of basic ROTC will be granted grade one civil service eligibility. Graduates will also be issued AFP serial number and a certificate for completing basic ROTC. It is a prerequisite to graduation, sir. ROTC in college will remain as an as option will remain optional as an advanced course for those desiring to join the armed forces upon completion of their baccalaureate degree. We submit that basic ROTC in senior high school will not violate the UN protocol on child soldier because number one, we are not training our boys for the purpose of sending them to the battlefield. Wait, graduates of ROTC will not be part of our reserve force until they reach the age of 18 years old. And number three, we are requiring basic ROTC not for the purpose of involving them in hostilities, but only to prepare them in the performance of their constitutional duty. We strongly believe that the UN protocol on child soldier will not be violated because the power of the President of the Republic to mobilize our reserve force is limited to defensive purposes only. Hindi po niya pwedeng sabihin, lusubin mo ito, activate, mobilize the reserve. Wala pong ganon. And therefore, we will not violate the UN protocol. Furthermore, in case of war, invasion, rebellion, our local law makes it the duty of every citizen to defend the state and our freedom. Section 2, National Policy, the Philippines. Section 2 of the National Defense Act. The National Policy of the Philippines shall be as follows. Letter A, the preservation of the state is the obligation of every citizen. Our National Defense Act does not qualify as to age, sex, race, or religion. When we are attacked, the government may call upon the people to defend the state. Last page, sir. Very important is the fact that mandatory basic ROTC in senior high school. Ito po yung sinabi kanina ni Senator Padilla. Very important is the fact that mandatory basic ROTC in senior high school will serve as a strong deterrent to NPA recruitment in school, in our schools, colleges, and universities. Finally, for those who are suggesting to call ROTC by a different name, but for the same purpose, be reminded of the President's directive during the first State of the Nation address, reinstitute ROTC. Why are we introducing a different program? The President, in his own words, Mr. Speak, Mr. Chairman, is herein reproduced verbatim. He said, number 16, mandatory reserve officers training course and national service training program. This seeks to reinstitute the ROTC program as a mandatory component of senior high school program in grades 11 and 12 in all public and private tertiary level institution. The aim is to motivate train, organize, mobilize students for national defense preparedness, including disaster preparedness and capacity building for risk-related situation. Mr. Chair, what is needed to be done only, Mr. Chair, is simply to put back into the law, put back into RA 7077, what was taken away by the NSTP law but without touching the NSTP law. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. See Thank Dr. you, uh, General Garcia, sir. Uh, thank you. Ma matanong nga pala kita, Attorney Farulan, ba bakit na napalitan natin yung pangalan na wala yung ROTC? Y yan yung, yung punto niya. Eh. Uh, yung sinabi ni Presidente nung SONA, bring back ROTC program. Uh, paano nga pala nakarating kayo nung uh, ibang... Ibang pangalan. Thank okay, you. Sir, uh, sir yung, yung pagbabago ng pangalan, bakit hindi ROTC, bakit hindi mandatory, walang mandatory dun sa pangalan ng title, it also carries yung the, the, 
the intent and the policy behind it and what really drives that program. Ang sabi nga po natin, ang gusto nat ang pag gustong paghugutan ng programa ay yung pagmamahal ng tao, ng bata, ng ating kabataan sa kanyang bayan. Ang kanyang alam mo, volunteerism sa pagsisilbi. Alam mo yung kuana, uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Yung Eh ko lang, baka sa amin lang mga matatanda 'yan eh. Pag sinabi mong erotisi, ang lakas ng dating ng uh, patriotism, ng nationalism. Sa atin sir, matatanda, di ba? Pag sinabi mga rotisi, may dating talaga na, ewan ko lang sa inyo, sa mga bata ngayon, kung ah. Uh, ah. anong dating sa inyo ng rotisi. Ang lakas ng dating ng uh, patriotism dyan, pag binanggit mga rotisi. But anyway, ah. we respect your, uh, ah. your uh, ideas. Ah. Please. Ah. Actually sir, I, I'm also a product of the advanced rotisi of UP. I'm a UP vanguard as well. I'm a Corps Commander, 97, and also an EFP Cadet of the Year, 1996. So I, I really feel, I, I went through the four years of grueling training as well. And also saw, uh, I, was, I graduated in 97, but I was active in helping out with uh, programs in ROTC. So I re actually saw what happened uh, because of the Mark Chua case and how, the, the, how it evolved. And, and that's also why I'm quite passionate about this. The, the change of team is really to have that impact. Uh, yes, we do understand the historical significance of ROTC. And that will never be changed, sir. That is also why in the, if you're going to look at the proposed subjects, which we did not include in the bill, but gusto uh, pasama ni Chair Popoy sana rin yun, uh, military history is a key feature in that, uh, in that curriculum as well. Uh, Parang makita talaga sa ROTC program. But right now, if we're going to look at the policy and the intent behind it, uh, looking at the context of the statement of President Marcos, uh, uh, President Bongbong Marcos in his last SONA. Uh, remember, sir, in, uh, the, in the first SONA of, Kong, of uh, President Duterte, this was also mentioned. Uh, in the first SONA of President Marcos, this was also mentioned. And in his uh, statement in, the President, uh, in President Marcos' uh, SONA, uh, he really wanted... Something as strong uh, with, with in, in the ROTC program, uh, something as strong as the program that carries the name ROTC, but he wants to expand it. He wants to make sure that uh, it, it, it also covers those areas uh, and covers the needs of the country right now. At the same time, uh, relevant and would really be attractive to the youth as well. And right now, Volunteerism seems to be the more sustainable approach in ensuring that uh, we have citizens willing to serve our country. Uh, the mandatory aspect of it, kasi nga, hindi lang World War II, sir. Uh, even in the 1950s, if you look at uh, our history, uh, if you go to General Magno, can I quento, sir? Uh, if you, if, I don't know if you, you can recall General Magno. Sinasabi niya, 1952, Metro Manila was actually almost, uh, was already encircled by the Hook Balahap at that time. And they were the graduates of the ROTC then. And they were immediately commissioned because they needed officers because that they were the last line of defense before Manila fell. We almost came close. Uh, Manila almost came close to falling to the hooks at that time. And then that it was the ROTC that actually saved Manila at, the, at that time. So, yung history lang sa nandun talaga. But, but with the changing of the times, we need to find a program that is sustainable and is fueled not by the mandatoriness or compulsion, but because the compulsion is not something the state pushes or requires, but it is a compulsion from inside the person. Yung pagmamahal niya mismo po talaga sa bayan, which is the message of our, two pa of our past president and our current president, yun din naman po ang gustong paggalingan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Buhay pa ba si Gerald Magno? Yes, sir. Very, ma very much healthy, sir. Sure ka? Brad Vanguard si General Vanguard. Si Jomag? Yes, si Jomag, sir. How old na? Sir. 92, sir. Huh? He's, okay. he, he's, nine... and he's very bright, uh, very sharp still, sir. Southcom commander. Uh, when I was a college student, uh, Southcom commander yan. Yes, sir. And the Why military pa? advisor of President Cory Aquino and also oh. pres former president of GSIS, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ka ano ano mo si General Parolan? Uh, the last time we spoke, we agreed that uh, we will be relatives by agreement, sir. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, attorney. Uh, Dali, uh, alam nyo, si Yusik Ronald Cardima, Atty. Reyes, Atty. Parolan, kayo mga UP Vanguards. Um, di ba nyo alam na ako rin ay MSU Rear Guards, ang tawag sa amin. Yung ROTC namin sa Mindoro State University sa Marawi, 
rear guards kasi sabi nila the UK uh, guards the front then uh, Emisio guards the rear so kayo vanguard kami rear guard we we complement each other and uh, advance sa uh, rotisi rin ako ng uh, UP ah, ng UP ng Emisio uh, kaya alam ko rin yung uh, yung programa na yan uh, by heart <laughs> Please, uh, Yusik Madriaga. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the honorable members of the committee. Just to clarify, sir, regarding the change of name, no? Um, I can proudly also say, sir, that uh, I underwent ROTC before I joined PMA. So I did not exempt myself from the ROTC. And uh, I, I do recognize uh, the, R, the word RO that we can say it's a word ROTC is a very venerable institution in our history. It first came about in UP and uh, it played a vital role in the defense of our country even up to now. But uh, the changes in the names sir, came about just to give proper perspective sir, dun sa mga intentions and objectives of training. Um, Instituting the word ROTC to grades 11 and 12 is a bit of a misnomer because we are not creating reg reserve officer to grades 11 and 12. So the reserve ROTC is being used for tertiary uh, for four years for those who really want to become officers later. Nandun yung ROTC because exacto yun sir, they want to become officers someday. So sa kanila yung term na ROTC. Doon sa mga hindi naman, sa college sir, na yung first two years, uh, meron silang citizen soldiers training doon sir. So these are for the res uh, mobilizable reserve. But, but the intent of the ROTC program itself is not lost in the, in the consensus bill that is being proposed. That is to prepare our youth. Uh, develop their nationalism, their patriotism, and make them ready for any eventualities. Yung mga sinait po, sir, ni, ni General Garcia are most of the, yung mga hindi na-implement on are nahagip po dito sa batas na to. Uh, yun lang po, sir. Kaya in-explain ko lang po kung ano yung bakit nagkaroon ng mga changes dun sa, yung sa 11 and 12 po, para it's a citizen development program na po ang tawag dun yun sa four-year course na mag-o-officer, yun po yung mandatory ROTC. But yung first two years ng tertiary is mandatory yun para sa lahat and prepare them for, uh, for war and for emergency. Kasi meron dun portion sila na citizen soldier training po in addition to other relevant subject. Alam mo yung distinction na yan? Na-cure na yan noon pa eh, 1979. Yung first two years ng ROTC namin, ang tawag nun si MT. Citizens Military Training. Then, nung nag-advance na kami, naging ROTC na. Kasi power preparation for uh, officership na yun ng armed forces. Eh. So, matagal na yan noon. Naayos na yan noon. But anyway, uh, I would like to hear from uh, uh, Yusek Cardema. Yeah, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I apologize for being late. I just came from a gathering of ROTC. Core Commanders in Baguio. So, just to start, sir, uh, para an icebreaker for everybody. I'm very happy everybody here is for ROTC. Ano lang, sa so sobrang uh, passionate na mga tao dito about ROTC, merong gusto sa college, merong gusto sa uh, senior high, at uh, iba pang uh, uh, edition ng ROTC. But uh, wala naman dito si Raul Manuel ngayon, congressman na, buti naman. Uh, siguro, just an icebreaker, I'd like to show you uh, a, a few minutes lang of what uh, the ROTC officers and uh, some of the Filipino youth leaders just did in Baguio, where I came from. Para makita ninyo, alam nyo, mga kabataan ngayon, iba, ang attention span, hindi ganun katulad ng dati, kaya makita nyo, ito lang, katatapos lang nito. Sound, sound. Lakasan nyo. Para ganahan yung mga maidad na dito. Maalala yung dinaanan namin noon.
Pinagsama-sama po natin uh, lahat ng PMA cadets, ROTC Corps Commanders, and SK. Ayan. Philosopher Diogenes said many centuries ago, and I quote him, The foundation of every state is the education of its youth. It is this practical education that will mold our leaders of the future to gain skills and knowledge in leading the youth of your respective areas of responsibility. Yet it is not only the academic education of our youth that is important, but the development of their leadership qualities as well. You will be our country's leaders in the very near future that might come sooner than you think. It behooves you to prepare for that time by continuously educating yourself, by learning as much as you can from books, your own lives, professors, and mentors. You hope the future rests in your hands. Prepare yourselves for the challenge. Understanding the importance of leadership to help you lead more fulfilling, socially engaging lives. All of you can be agents of social change, but it will not come in handy unless you hone your skills by educating yourselves. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. That is, according to the President Nelson Mandela of South Africa. At this point, I would like to congratulate the National Youth Commission for unifying them in one common goal. And that it is to reaffirm our commitment and adding determination upang paglingkuran ng ating bansa at involve the youth in all activities in society. Leadership cannot be taught through what it cannot be learned. One has to have the appetite, the courage, and commitment to be a good leader. Leadership is both a virtue and skill that youth leaders like all of you must seek to acquire. Yusik, nahanap ni Senator Tolentino yung picture niya, bakit hindi mo sinama? May isang ano sir, mas buong video for him lang yung parada sir. Opo sir. This is just a second day sir. Nagbalag pa yan umakyat doon eh. Oo sir. Okay, thank you. Please continue. Sir, uh, you've just seen uh, how uh, the NYC gathered uh, the ROTC Corps Commanders of uh, different universities together with the Sangguniang Kabataan leaders and uh, PMA cadets, PNPA cadets, PMMA cadets in Baguio. And uh, I just came from Baguio this morning. And uh, yun nga sir, minsan nga tinatanong ko ba't hindi ako minsan ini-invite sa about sa ROTC. Kami na nga lang talaga yung push ng push ng todo with the DND. I was an ROTC Corps Commander in UP Diliman before. I was also a CAT High School Corps Commander in Los Baños. Bago naman yun, sir. Sino senior? Mm -hmm. Senior dalawa? Senior Ito po si Spaki, sir. Yes, sir. And si uh, Attorney Reyes po, sir. Ayun, ah, talaga. Obvious. Opo, sir. Kami, sir, sa National Youth Commission, ang masabi namin dito, sir, uh, taking, taking off from uh, what the recent uh, uh, resource person have said, um... Sa pangalan na uh, technicality lang yan, sir. 
minsan pag ginawa niyo yung Citizen Service Act, just an objective uh, opinion, yung mga out-of-school youth magtatanong, hindi ba sila citizen? Hindi sila sinasali, di ba? Mas kailangan nga nila ng aruga at disiplina galing sa gobyerno, pagtuturo, di ba? So, ano lang, just, uh, just an objective point of view. Pag uh, nilipat mo from ROTC, to, uh, kasi minsan pinag-aawayan dito, ROTC by college, ROTC by high school, kapag ginawa mong Citizen Service Act, hindi ba citizens yung mga out-of-school youth na mas kailangan ng training at disiplina di ba, para magkaroon sila ng future? Pangalawa, sir, yung sinabi rin ni Senator JV na he undergone uh, ROTC even though he was a son of a senator, yun ang isang magandang aspeto ng uh, ROTC. Just like in Korea, di ba, kahit anak ka ng bilyonaryo, anak ka ng politiko rin, you must undergo, kahit artista ka, you must undergo the military service there. So this uh, gives way yung parang equality. Kahit anak ka ng mayaman, anak ka ng mahirap, anak ka ng politiko, anak ka ng enlisted personnel, all of you, basta kayo ay kabataang Pilipino, will undergo this uh, training, this national service uh, for our country. O, ano pang uh, pinagdepadehan uh, dito, kaya tumatagal, uh, kung saan ilalagay? ba? Diba? High school ba? O sa college ba? Sino ba mag-handle? Kahit kasi busy yung mga ibang ahensya, departamento. Siguro, just, just a note, ha? i-volunteer ko yung agency namin. National Youth Commission, meron kaming commissioner for SK. Pwede rin naman lagyan ng isang commissioner for ROTC yun para hindi kayo nag-aaway-aaway. Mas tutok kami dyan. Hindi nga namin trabaho yan, pero we're the ones gathering the ROTC. Core commanders every year. We are finding ways to bring back the ROTC. Uh, for the past 10 years, I was an ROTC lobbyist in Congress. Doon ko nga nakilala si Senator Gatchalian, Congressman Gatchalian, because every year, siguro I approach around 50 congressmen to lobby for the ROTC. Ang problema dyan, na-observe naman ni na, ni na, na ating mga senador, if it is not a topic of the month, a topic of the week, uh, talaga matatabunan yung ROTC. Di ba? So, ang uh, kagandahan ngayon, it is a priority measure of the incumbent president and commander-in-chief. That is why, uh, naka ilang steps na tayo, pataas na. So, dito po sa ating level, wag na po tayo mag-away-away. Uh, lahat naman tayo passionate for the ROTC. Let's just find the common ground para maisabatas na po ito. Um, ang observation ko bilang National Youth Commission Chairman, kapag nag-gather yung mga NYC Chairman at Youth Minister sa Asia Pacific sa ibang bansa, Alam niyo yung mga kabataan nila, pinaprepare rin nila for disaster preparedness in military training. Pagtataka kayo, yung iba kong kausap na NYC chairman na sinasabi nila, handa sa disasters yung mga kabataan nila. Kasi yung bagyo daw, pagkagaling sa Pilipinas, dadaan sa kanila. Hindi ko nga lang matanong sa sarili ko, ba't sa mismong Pilipinas? Hindi tayo prepared eh sila. Na secondary victim ng bagyo, prepared sila. Di ba? We have a 110 million population at ang mga kabataang Pilipino kailangan ng nation building training. And uh, to take uh, note of uh, the comments of uh, General Garcia there, yung sinasabi nila ROTC is just a subject. Di ba? The we want our Filipino youth to be nationalistic and to be disciplined. Pero hindi lang to dapat nanjan. Dapat uh, kaya nga kami sa National Youth Commission bago magsona ang presidente. Nag-submit na kami ng, uh, ng ano namin, proposal namin sa presidente bago pa siya magsona. We want the Boy Scout and Girl Scout to be mandatory in the elementary. We want CAT also or PMT to be mandatory in high school or senior high. And we want ROTC to be mandatory in college because hindi pwedeng ano yan. Pagdating ng koleyo, aatin ka lang, tapos sabi mo na magiging nationalistic yung gawa ng uh, ROTC. Pwede. Pero dapat simula mo sa mas bata pa, yung formula, formulative stage ng bata para nag, uh, tinuturuan mo na siya ng basic survival, uh, love of, of country, elementary pa lang, pagpunta ng high school, alam niya, yun yung level up dun sa kanyang national uh, nation building training, ROTC, yun yung isa pang nation building training niya, advanced training na. Ang mga kabataan ngayon, alam naman na ibang kabataan dito, ang attention span, hindi ganun. Diba? Hindi yan yung katulad natin na nakasanayan mong lalabas sa kapitbahay, makikipaglaro sa kapitbahay and mag-uusap and ang todo yung interaction. Social media na. Ang mga kabataan ngayon, you, you, must, uh, you must make the ROTC program 
if this is enacted into a more uh, attractive program for the Filipino youth, for them to, en to uh, enjoy, for them to uh, ano, aspire for, to graduate. Isa pang comment ko siguro, yung sa uniform, yun naman talaga yung isang issue ng mga kabataan. Uniform, gagastos daw, sasabihin ng mga magulang. Why not uh, sa simula ng ROTC program, pwedeng kung ano yung school uniform nila, yun muna. And kapag uh, onwards, tsaka na magkaroon ng uniform. Bakit? Kapag pinabili mo agad ng uniform yan, bago mag-training, una, gastos. Magrarally na naman yung mga anti-ROTC na bigyan ng gastos. Pangalawa, baka isipin ng bata, ang uniforme ay nabibili lang. Di ba? Kung saan-saan. Pwede ka hindi nagte-training, bili ka lang, isot mo lang. Why not make the uniform parang an award or an level up after training for two months, three months, now you deserve to wear the uniform of our country. Kayo na mag-decide kung it will be provided by the government or it will be provided by the schools. But uh, kailangan, ano, ang iniisip kasi natin dito yung mga technicality, eh. college ba, high school ba, gastusin, sino magte-training. You must uh, think, this is a nation-building program to make the Filipino youth Milyong-milyong kabataang Pilipino to make them have sense of discipline, sense of nation building, sense of nationalism. And ang comment ko lang siguro sa armed forces, huwag niyo po dito ipadala yung mga opisyal niyo na may kaso sa field. Kasi minsan pag opisyal ka sa field, nagkakaso ka, papadala ka sa ROTC, ikaw muna yung commandant. Yeah, Kualan, lessons learned na yan ng AP. Sabi ko nga, you should involve the best of the best officers para sa ROTC. Noon kasi, the worst of the worst ang lalagay doon. Kasi ayun lang, ah, reserve, yung ROTC lang yan, ibigay yan sa mga mahinang klase. Kaya tingnan mo ang naging resulta. Pero ngayon, lessons learn na natin yun. Dapat ilagay natin yung pinaka magagaling na officials. Please continue. Thank you, sir. Last uh, clip. This was the ROTC in the Philippines 105 years ago. Kanina nakita niyo yung mga kabataan ngayon. Ito yung mga kabataan 105 years ago sa ating bansa. Hindi po yung mga nakatalikod. Ah. Yan. Uh, yan. <laughs> mga kabataan Pilipino 105 years ago. These are not soldiers. These are ord ordinary students. Saan yan? UP? Ang galing ng UP talaga. Napi yung
to end uh, our uh, no our presentation siguro masabi ko lang sa inyo na karamihan sa inyo dito this is just part of your daily schedule na anong schedule natin today ROTC sa mga resource person sa ating mga senador sa mga senate staff uh, today uh, this morning ROTC bukas iba na susunod na araw iba na but uh, para ipakita sa inyo kung gaano ka importante ito nung tinayo yung Commonwealth of the Philippines Commonwealth Act number one is National Defense Act. Kung ito, mas nauna pa ito sa National Defense Act. Pero to makita nyo yung gano'ng kahalaga ang pagkikreate nitong military training sa ating mga kabataan, sa ating bansa, na yun ang kauna-una ang batas nung tinayo yung gobyerno ng Commonwealth dito sa Pilipinas. What uh, you decide here is a decision to strengthen not only one subject in college or in high school, but to strengthen an entire generation of Filipino youth and their sense of discipline and sense of nation building. That is why from the National Youth Commission, we commend everybody here, the senator sponsors, and all the advocates here. We are all advocating for ROTC, magpalit man yan ng pangalan at kahit ano, magkaisa po tayo dito para maipasa na ito. Kasi nung huling kongreso na alala ko, it was already a priority bill of Senate of uh, President Duterte. Kinulang lang ng ilang araw kaya hindi naging batas. Eh, inabutan tayo ng pandemic. Eh, hindi yes, na here ni kasi sa basic education 'yon, 'di ba? Kasi si Dr. Getsalian, nabutan tayo ng pandemic. Yes, sir. And now uh, it is also a priority measure again of the new president and he mentioned it in his first sona. Sana po maging batas na. Ang pwedeng niyong gawing pagkakaiba dito is uh, nakakasawa naman talaga kung puro marcha. Di ba? I experienced that as an ROTC basic officer and even as a core commander. Ayoko rin naman nagmamarcha yung mga kabataan pa ulit-ulit. You must create good uh, programs and modules for the ROTC. Why not create a disaster preparedness battalion, a cyber security battalion kasi social media age na ngayon. Yun yung mga pwede niyong ibahin sa ROTC ngayon. But, kailangan na talaga tong ROTC because lumalaki yung populasyon ng Pilipinas, wala tayong sense of, uh, ano, yung strong nation-building subjects like the ROTC. Sabihin ko sa inyo, for the last time, ang failure dito ng NSTP, may representative yung NSTP? Wala. NSTP existed for 20 years. Hindi naman na... Nabuo talaga yung National Service uh, Training Corps na yon. Kapag nagkagera, nagkakalamities, wala pang napapatawag for 20 years. There are schools na kumikita sa NSTP because dati, ang bibilin mo lang naman talaga uniform and uh, pambayad siguro sa, sa instructor o sa commandant, pang snacks lang yun lang. But now, it is uh, an income generating uh, function for schools because they are... Uh, they are offering different uh, NSTPs. For example, in UP, there's a college. Origami yung pinalit sa, ano, sa ROTC. Yun yung NSTP ng college nila, origami. For ano, one ano, year, ano, origami. Ano, ano? Ano yun? Uh, origami, sir, yung folding ng papel, sir. Ha? Huh? Folding ng Japanese uh, paper. Uh, uh, Japanese art, sir. So, yes, sir. <laughs> Nowadays, every college, every school, can offer its own version of NSTP and it is not being accounted for. Kung anong tinuturo nila sa kabataan Pilipino, you, may, you must make it mandatory and uniform. From Luzon to Mindanao, isang, isang uh, training module lang ang tinuturo, isang POI, Program of Instruction. Para hindi, wala rin discrepancy. Meron kang mga kabataan ngayon, hindi nag-ROTC, meron kang kabataan nag-NSTP, you must make it uniform. Ipasok mo na lang yung ibang magaganda sa NSTP as modules dun sa ROTC pero wag yung iba-iba yung nararanasan ng kabataan Pilipino. It creates inequality. ba? So, sana po maibalik na natin ang ROTC and the start of the school year next year ito po ay ma-implement sa ating bansa dahil we are the most disaster-prone country in the world and you must mobilize the youth in disaster preparedness. Wala nang iba. Hindi na natin mobilize yung senior citizens. It is the youth who is the hope of this motherland and this ROTC will be the seed to create 
a sense of nation building and discipline among the youth, among the hope of the motherland. Thank you po. Thank you, uh, Yusek uh, Cardema. Nabanggit na rin ni Yusek Cardema yung regarding sa uniform. Yung proposal natin is uh, subsidized yung uniform ng mga estudyante. Pero before that, ta tanungin natin yung Department of Finance habang andito. Wala ang DBM eh. Yo, sagutin, andyan bang DBM? Anyway, andito yung muna yung, si Kuwa muna, Atty. Gakutan muna. Ano masasabi mo tungkol dyan sa budget? Mayroon ba tayong mapagpukunan ng uh, pondo para dito? Good morning, Sir, Your Honor. Thank good you. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, good morning, everyone. We, uh, in the Department of Finance, we just have, uh, it's like manifest that we generally support the intent of the proposal to inculcate among the youth uh, uh, the value of patriotism uh, in so far as the incentives provisions is concerned your honor we the, the department of finance uh, participated and attended the consultative meetings spearheaded by the plo your honor for the drafting of the consensus bill uh, nevertheless we reserve uh, the right to submit uh, our formal position paper in so far as the various senate bills is concerned for this proposed measure your honor Thank you. Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, may we hear from uh, Attorney Estrada of the Philippine Association of Private Schools, Colleges, and Universities. You have the floor, sir. Magandang uh, tanghali po, uh, Senator Bato, Chairman, and the um, authors of uh, and sponsors of bills, and uh, uh, everyone, uh, all the members of the committee present, subcommittee present. Magandang hapon po. I am... Uh, I, I, I join the collective um, uh, aspirations and goals of the authors of the bills, and also I, I join the the um, um, goals on 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 uh, preparedness uh, for insurgencies, threats of war, uh, disaster risk management. Um, ako po personally, I'm I'm proud to say that I'm also a product of the ROTC. Um, even if I'm the namesake of the president at that time, and hindi po ako nagpa-exempt. <laughs> and meron po akong opportunity non to be a draftsman, pero mas maganda po na nasa field. So I'm also a product of the ROTC. Uh, but I'm not here for uh, my personal uh, uh, position, but uh, of the private education sector as managing director of the Cocopea. So I'd like to uh, provide some inputs for consideration of the committee in order to arrive at a consensus bill consolidating all of the versions. First, um, to allay the fears on allegations of abuses and corruption that haunt the ROTC implementation in the past. I think this is very important, both in the bills of Senator JV, uh, Senate Bill 1235 and that of Senator Jingoy, Senate Bill 468 in their respective explanatory notes it highlight the importance of prevention of abuses and crimes, specifically hazing, bribery, extortion, graft, and sexual harassment. Also in Senate Bill 1235, it acknowledges and provides the proper context that after issues of corruption, hazing, and abuses surrounding its implementation, ROTC was made optional through the enactment of the NSTP law. In Cocopea, we believe that fundamental to reinstating the mandatory ROTC is revisiting these matters that paved the way for the, re -enact for the enactment of NSTP law. As mentioned in the bills, this include allegations of physical, psychological excesses and even abuses on students by those handling the ROTC programs in colleges and universities and allegations of program-wide corruption. Well, these Senate bills, including that of the chairman, Senator Bato, provide for the imposition of maximum penalties for corruption, hazing, sexual harassment, and other abuses when committed by those administering the program objectively, your honors, this may still be inadequate. We propose to explore in the bills putting more controls at the level of the schools to ensure abusers are uh, deterred from even uh, or abuses are deterred from even happening at the first instance. We also kindly propose the mandate of creation of offices in the schools to receive complaints from trainees and those 
that ensure the welfare of student trainees are fully protected and promoted during training. This is aligned with Section 10 of Senator Win Kachalian's bill on, uh, on the creation of grievance committee. In the past, uh, Your Honors, when ROTC programs are implemented in colleges and universities, its officials are completely devoid of any discretion on how the training is conducted, on the selection of officers to train the students, and even the student disciplinary policies applicable to student trainees and even to the trainers or officers. The complete or full autonomy and separation of the ROTC from the college or university administration lacks the necessary checks and balances in its implementation, which would also be able to deter abuses and corruption. And most especially now, this is important because the uh, concept of ROTC and the, prog the program components now expand to civil defense, non-military uh, combat, disaster management. And so therefore, we would hope for a, a more increased role of the higher education institutions and not just mere venues for training. Also important is the academic freedom since of institutions of higher learning since we are implementing this in higher education. As you may know, the um, academic freedom is guaranteed by the Constitution no less under Article 14, Section 4, Paragraph 1, and it needs no legislation uh, for this to be enjoyed by our institutions of higher learning. And, and certainly, academic freedom is important because we are implementing this in the academe it's a requirement for graduation. It, um, it is also implemented in the schools and it affects students. And um, in as much as, again, it is mandated to be part of the curricula and trainings are held in the campus, ROT must not completely set aside academic freedom in the administration of ROTC in the schools through the oversight function of the Commission on Higher Education. Also, the concept of shared responsibility and accountability in the implementation of ROTC programs finds basis in Article 14, Section 3, Paragraph 2 of the Constitution, which also provides the role of educational institutions. So when we talk about patriotism, nationalism, kasama po dito sa provision ng Constitution, which provides for the role of educational institutions, and if I may read, they, educational institutions, shall inculcate patriotism, nationalism, foster love of humanity, respect for human rights, appreciation of the role of national heroes, teach and rights and duties of citizenship, among others. So, kasama po yan sa role ng ating educational institutions. And looking closely at the declaration of policy of all of the bills filed, they are very much aligned with the role of educational institutions. And HEIs, especially the private higher education institutions, each have their own vision and mission. Some schools, particularly religious educational institutions, believe that in attaining peace, for example, military training is not the only answer, but propagating faith to alleviate poverty as the root cause of insurgency. Moreover, there are those who think that the nation needs an army of volunteers also and advocates to fight the threats of illiteracy of political and social apathy and the perpetuation of social inequities that continue to obstruct genuine national progress. Hence, we hope for provisions that uh, may be explored in, the, in all of the bills where there is an increased participation from our higher education institutions and they are given the freedom to determine on their own institutional, their own constitu institutional and curricular programs and align them in the declared policy and goals of the proposed law, especially on the, um, on the curricular uh, development, Senator. Uh, Chairman Bato. And lastly, on the incentives, we appreciate the, uh, the provisions on incentives to students in all of the bills, but uh, we hope that uh, uh, an incentive to institutions uh, may also be explored, uh, the participating uh, private higher education institutions, um, in order to help uh, uh, the government in implementing this program. So for context, we have uh, 1,700 private higher education institutions in the country of the total 1,900. So as our majority, if we can uh, get or maximize the support of all of these higher education institutions through, through support from the government, I think it will help strengthen our aspirations. And also we have... Uh, 1.8 million students in uh, higher education 
of the total 3.4 million. So malaki po talaga ang nasa private sector. So, but not all private higher education institutions have the capacity and capability to to hold uh, the ROTC trainings uh, programs in their campuses and also to provide the the necessary support to, to the students. So uh, if that can also be explored, yung pong uh, incentives and support, institutional support po sa ating mga private higher education institutions. Maraming salamat po. And uh, we hope we can also participate if there is a technical working group uh, that may be created to help in the uh, drafting of the provisions. Maraming salamat po at magandang hapon. Thank you, Attorney Estrada. Uh, we'll take in po yung lahat ng uh, inputs mo. Uh, we proceed to Attorney Joshua Calagoas. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we would like to say that we would. We... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Pa, pa yes, sir. Uh, we join the um, the points of made by Attorney Estrada as uh, as representative of the association of colleges and universities we would also like to reiterate that um the current bills that we have um presented to us are really um lacking in terms of giving the school um some freedom in um and in, in controlling the curric uh, the curricular or parts of the curriculum curricula with regard to the ROTC program. But uh, we would like to re reiterate that we are happy that we are talking about nation building and incul inculcating that with the youth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, lang yan. Uh, bigayan lang yan. Give and take lang yan. Uh, I dare uh, all schools will adjust to this uh, program or the program will adjust to the peculiarities of the school. So, makukuha natin yan through magandang usapan. Salamat po. Thank you. Pero, uh, at, uh, sir, we'll reserve the last uh, for uh, Senator Tolentino, uh, General uh, Calonso. Then, after, yeah. after uh, General Calonso, si Director Sullivan, hindi pa siya nakapagbigay uh, ng kanyang uh, Pending statement. Sir, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yes, floor. sir. Thank you very much. Just to conclude the, the position of the NARA, we would like to support the, the what was mentioned by General Salazar that uh, the administration and supervision of the ROTC implementation should remain with the Department of National Defense. Also, on the issue of training, Sir, uh, meron lang akong gustong sabihin tungkol dito sa training na para sa ating lahat, those who will supervise and work for the development of the training program, that at the end of the training program, graduates should be able to confidently say that when needed, he will be ready to defend, prepared and ready to defend the country. Yun lang, sir, kasi... Pinag-uusapan ko minsan, gano'n ba katagal yung training? 30 hours, 60 hours, that is very short. So, kung, kung tayo yung magti-training at masabi natin sa sarili natin na kapag ka ako ay nakatapos nitong training na ito, ay handa na ako at ready na ako kung tawagin ako na lumaban kung sakaling kailangan, okay. But, God help us kung sakaling mangyari yan kung hindi natin matrain ng maayos yung ating mga, kas mga kabataan, imagine what will happen to them. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I would like to associate myself with your uh, observation. Dapat talaga kailangan natin yan na handa sila. What's the purpose of uh, this program? Kung hindi natin sila magiging uh, prepared, hindi natin sila ma-prepare for any eventuality. Uh, Alam ko, yung shortcomings ng armed forces, pero ako ha, yung ROTC ko na dinaanan ay maswerte kami. Dahil uh, sa Mindanao, maraming uh, military units doon. Pag nagmamarsa kami, nagpa-formation, ang hawak-hawak ng mga, yung mga kuha namin, kadetes, kahoy talaga na rifle, kahoy. Pero pagdating sa subject ng mga, uh, ano yung, uh, Anong tawag nun? 
Hindi, hindi, masip yung assembly, disassembly ng arroz ba? Field stripping. Field stripping ng mga subjects. Andaling, madali kami manghiram. Daming army doon sa gilid ng uh, MSU campus. Dali manghiram ng mga armalite. Lahat na klase, pati M60. Masinggan, P pwede namin i-disassemble doon. Pati 45 pistol, kayang-kaya. Pwede sa simbol dahil maraming nagsusuporta ng mga uh, military units. Pero kawawa yung mga probinsya na wala masyado mahiraman, hindi masyado na tuunan yung training, talagang kulang, kulang ang uh, kalalabasan. But anyway, uh, let's uh, give chance to the AP para... Uh, Kuha na ito. Anong tawag niyan? Anong tawag niyan? Uh, re Redemption. Redemption ito dahil nga nawala ito for... A For 20 years, nawala ang mandatory ROTC. Redemption time ito ngayon ng uh, military. Paano nila gawin ito na uh, hindi masayang ito programa na ito? Sir. Sir, uh, ay yes, sir. Uh, Last before lang, uh, uh, Director Sullivan. Uh, bago po, sir, sa part namin, sir, gusto lang po namin ipaano, sir, na RC training is not a prerequisite for graduation. This is in preparation for our constitutional mandate. Kasi dito tayo nawawala, sir. So, this is a preparatory. We are trained to be prepared to perform our constitutional duty, not a prerequisite to graduate college. Yun lang po, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, naka-align naman yan. Parang short-term objective mo is to graduate college, pero ang long-term objective mo talaga is love of country. Madipinsahan natin itong bansa natin. Yun lang naman talaga ang ating pinaka-ultimate yan na uh, purpose. Thank you, sir. Thank you for reminding us. Uh, Director Sullivan, you have the floor. Salamat po, uh, sir uh, chair. At uh, good afternoon po to uh, everyone, Senator Wynn, Senator uh, Francis, uh, and uh, everybody uh, who is uh, uh, here. Uh, this is rather short. Uh, from the Department of Education, of course, under the leadership of our uh, Vice President and Secretary, uh, Sara Z. Uh, Duterte. So, um, through the LLO uh, and through the Office of the Undersecretary for uh, Legislative um, Affairs and Partnerships of the Department of Education, um, we uh, are preparing the, the final uh, uh, draft draft of the position uh, paper, it has to be uh, vetted first by our uh, um, uh, vice uh, president. But the gist of uh, the message of the Department of Education in reference to the bills on the ROTC is that the ROTC is for higher education. So uh, that is the position of the Department of Education. So the details of uh, this position will be submitted po to your... Uh, to you, dear uh, Chairman. Thank you, Pop. Thank you, Director Sullivan. Salamat. Uh, can we hear from DBM uh, online? DBM? Rodel Orantes from DBM. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, this yes, is Perpetual Judea Kiasan Po of DBM. Um, ah, DBM pala ito. Okay, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Opo. Uh, good afternoon po. Um, and to those attending this meeting. Thank you, sir, for inviting the DBM po. Um, as for the um, uh, DBM position paper, we have already submitted the position paper on Senate Bill number 468 to the committee. And um, basically, sir, the comments stated therein are applicable to the other bills. So, however, for um, Senate Bill number 1235, uh, mayroon po mga ibang provisions doon na wala po doon sa uh, Senate Bill 468. So in general, Mr. Chair, the DBM interposes no objection to the objectives of the proposed measure. And as stated po doon sa position paper, the funding requirements uh, of the bills, um, the same should form part of the budget proposals of the agencies concerned. And um, the inclusion po, in the General Appropriations Act shall be subject to the evaluation by the DBM using the criteria, the parameters, and priorities for the particular budget year and the subsequent authorization of Congress. For Senate Bill number 1235, sir, 
uh, where Section 9 proposes the creation of Citizen Service Mobilization Commission as an attached agency po sa Office of the President and on Section 24, which proposes the mobilization centers in each province and city and on Section 31 on the appropriations provision. Sir, initially, um, our comments on the provisions of the bill are as follows. For Section 9, sir, since the proposal for the creation of a commission has organizational implications, it is to be noted that the National Government Right Sizing Program, which is also one of the priorities of the current administration, just like po itong uh, ROTC bill, um, the intention po of the National Government Right Sizing Program is um, it covers all agencies of the executive branch to streamline operations of different agencies and to right size the organizational structure and manpower complement among others po. So to avoid duplication and to ensure sectoral and holistic approach, any functional and structural modifications affecting the government agencies under the executive branch could better be pursued under the National Government Right Sizing Program. Uh, for Section 24 of the bill, which proposes the establishment of mobilization centers in each province and cities, uh, the proposal po is for the local government units to provide an office to handle the administrative aspects of mobilization and the equipment shall be supplied in close coordination with the AFP, the PNP, and the OCD. In this case, uh, Mr. Chair, um, we suggest that the bill should be clear as to the administrative expenses to be incurred in the implementation of the act. Uh, under section 16 of the local government code, po, uh, the promotion of the general welfare of its con constituents is essential. So since the proposal may be considered part of the peace and order efforts of the LGUs, uh, the same may be charged against the LGUs funds. But this should be clear, sir, in the bill. On section 31, sir, on the appropriations provision, uh, second paragraph of section 31 provides that an initial funding of 50 million shall be allocated from the president's social fund to sustain the operation of the commission and the implementation of the act for the first year of its effectivity. And thereafter, the citizen service fund shall be included in the annual general appropriations act. May we mention, sir, that the president's social fund is an off-budget po, and it's being administered by the office of the president. Uh, so we um, we suggest, sir, that the comments of the office of the president um, is relevant on the bill if the same can be accommodated by the president's social fund. Um, so if the citizen service fund will be pursued, uh, may we reiterate po uh, that the same should form part of the budget proposal of the agencies concerned and the inclusion of which in the GAA shall be subject to the evaluation by the DBM using the criteria, primary, uh, parameters, and priorities for the particular budget year and the subsequent authorization by Congress. So that would be all for now, Mr. Chair, and again, thank you po. Ma'am, thank you. Matagal ka na ba sa DBM? Um, 34 years in service po sa DBM. Oh, sa DBM? Yes, sir. Oh, uri. Maganda. At uh, at least, improving ang DBM ngayon. Dahil uh, pinag-aralan nyo lahat ng provisions ng lahat ng bills na uh, sinabit dito sa committee na ito. Talagang in-scrutinize ninyo. Eh, noon, pag sabi mo DBM, Ang sagot ng DBM, subject to availability of panzer. Yun lang. At least ngayon, ha? thank you. Thank you at pinag-aralan nyo ng gusto yan. At, uh, uh, we appreciate. We appreciate your effort. Maraming salamat, ma'am. Thank you po. Thank you, uh, dalawang na sagot ng DBM noon. Eh. May pundo, walang pundo. Yun lang yun sagot ko. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Salamat. Uh, Tisda. Tisda. Uh, is she around? Tisda, kay meron pang concluding statement si Senator Rowan Gatsalian at saka si Senator Tolentino. Mr. Chair, good Tisda? afternoon po. Yes, uh, go ahead. You, you have the floor. 
Attorney. Mr. Chair, good afternoon po and everyone. Um, good afternoon po. This is Attorney Raymart Kiambo po from TESDA. Uh, firstly po, we support um, the measures na magkaroon po ng ROTC sa mga tertiary level. Uh, specifically to TESDA po, we would like to manifest that we limit the apl application to two, at least two-year programs as what uh, Attorney Farolan mentioned a while ago. Um, this is to consider po kasi um, TESDA has programs po na may ilan ay 15 days lang, ilan ay 30 days lang to complete. Um, other than that, uh, Mr. Chair, um, we would like to manifest that we'll be submitting our official uh, position on the matter. Um, thank you po, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Attorney. Uh, maraming salamat sa uh, support ninyo sa mga bills natin dito. Uh, next, PLLO. Sir, you want to say something? Um, I just wish to inform the body that uh, taking the cue from the president after the State of the Nation address, ROTC being one of the priority measures enunciated by the president, the appeal already took the initiative of introducing uh, a process uh, intervention. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, we are able to help uh, expedite the legislative process further um, by submitting a consensus-based uh, unified version from the executive branch so that this will be considered as a unified stand of the executive, the, particularly the concerned agencies. And at the same time, this is to avert the uh, dissonance that characterized the participation of most agencies in the la last Congress. Um, so we speak with one voice in this committee from here on. So. Uh, we started the process. This is a series of uh, interagency consultation that we sponsored uh, starting in August and uh, lasted until yesterday, actually, uh, particularly on the ROTC bill. And um, we started by scanning all the pending bills in Congress in both the House and the Senate before we came up with a proponent's uh, draft on the bill. In, which was subjected to further vetting by all the concerned agencies until we came up with a holistic view of the program that we want implemented uh, via legislation. Uh, it includes all the uh, observations, uh, the loopholes, the problems encountered in the past in order to come up with an improved uh, program design. So we are in fact submitting today to the, com the subcommittee a draft consensus bill uh, for the consideration of the committee. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat. Ay, basahin ko lang itong kwan. comment ng isang kwan. Uh, phone in uh, commenter. <laughs> commenter. Uh, sir, uh, parang ang, kung baguhin ninyo ang kwan, title, National Service Training Program, from ROTC, eh, parang national, uh, parang kwan, itong National Citizen Service Training Program, eh, parang in STP lang rin ang dating, sir. National Service Training Program, in STP. In both version po, considered optional ang ROTC, kaya ang dating po, parang in STP plus lang itong bago. But anyway, we have to, we have to inform the public kung anong, tin, anong laman talaga nito uh, para Hindi sila, hindi sila mamislid pag uh, lumabas sa itong batas na ito. Uh, parang in STP lang daw rin ang dating. <laughs> anyway, uh, pagdidipatihan na pa natin yan. Uh, nasa committee level pa tayo. Uh, from here, would like to listen to Senator Wynn Katsalian. You have the floor, you. sir. Your Thank order. you, Mr. Chairman. And... Uh, I thank all the source persons for their candidness and also for their uh, um, opinions and comments. Nakikinig po ako na mabuti and everyone really gave um, a very good uh, perspective on uh, the proposal, Mr. Chairman. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, to enrich our records and also to uh, put in some more detail on uh, the uh, philosophy out of the proposals, I, I want to ask the 
official position of DND, you know, because the original, I, I, when I uh, had the chance to hear the original versions of ROTC, which was going to be um, uh, uh, going to be mandatory in senior high school, DND's position was to put it in senior high school, and um, there were reasons. No, so I just want to get the official position of DND now. Um, uh, I know there are a lot of changes, a lot of discussions, but just to put it on record, uh, what is the official position of the ND uh, as to the man putting as to making RTC mandatory, and why uh, is now why is that the official position uh, now? Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Gatchelian, sir. So the official position of the Department of National Defense is to put the ROTC or the National Citizen Service Training uh, in the tertiary. The reason for that, sir, is uh, just to put everything into perspective. If you put the ROTC training in the 11 and 12, uh, we are not producing reserve officer. We are not intending to produce reserve officer out of the senior high school. And uh, taking into consideration the, the nature of the the youth today uh, to make it uh, more uh, uh, palatable or mas maganda para sa kanila, sir, is uh, we prepare, sir, the youth. Uh, it, 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 does, it, uh, it is not logical, sir, to for, for the 11s and 12 to introduce them immediately into a uh, purely military, militaristic uh, kind of subject. It is better that to to prepare the minds and the emotions of the youth for for, for, for future training. That's why uh, the 11 and 12 program is intended to, to generate, to create good citizenship and to prepare them for, for possible military training or military service in the future. Parang ano, sir, eh, bago, bago mong itanim yung punla ng dapat i-ready mo muna sir yung field. So yun yung naging konsepto namin sa DND na i-ready mo muna yung isip ng mga bata kasi introduce mo sila kagad dun sa medyo harsh na klase ng training. If, if they are ready, then when they go to the tertiary, they would accept yung, yung rigor of a military training. They will be more prepared. Hindi lang sir yung sasabihin na puro lang yan marcha, puro marcha, walang, walang balian sa amin. So by preparing the 11s and 12 and then uh, making the program mandatory sir, so first and second year of college, then yung gustong when creating a track for those who want to become officers. So yun sir yung naging bagong konsepto natin sir sa ROTC program instead of putting it immediately, sir, sa 11 and 12. If I may, uh, Your Honor, uh, siguro yung nagkakaroon ng uh, change of uh, personnel, ang DND, yung nag-advocate no ng uh, grades 11 and 12 were defense officials uh, during the previous administration. Ito na ngayon ang stand ng bagong administration, siguro. And, uh, and to add, no, uh, nabanggit mo na rin yung Poro March, ha? I just want to disabuse the minds of the public pagdating sa marcha marcha kasi sa para sa kanila parang useless ang marcha alam nyo, everything starts with marching pagdating sa military no military outfit in the whole universe na hindi nag start sa marching standing at, at attention diyan nagsisimula talaga ang pagiging military mo eh alam mo isa bilang marcha marcha lang yan Alam nyo, simple ob obedience to commands ay napalaking bagay. Hindi lang sa isang military organization, kundi sa iyong pagkatao. Marunong ka sumunod ng order ng parents mo, sumunod ng order ng nasa taas. Yun. Pag sabi right face, nag left face ka, uh, tinamaan ka ng bala, patay ka. Diba? Pag sabing drop, hindi ka nag-drop, ratatat ang kalaban, tinamaan ka. Maneuver left, nag-maneuver right ka. Hindi ka sumunod sa command. Simple obedience to commands. Ay, napakalaking bagay sa buhay ng tao. Hindi lang buhay na sundalo, kundi buhay ng tao. Napaka-importante po ng marching. Kaya nga, palagi kong sinasabi yan, huwag niyo sabihin na marcha-marcha lang yan. 
ikaw, disiplinado ka bang tao? Sige nga. Pamarchahin kita. Kung marunong ka sumunod sa command ko, eh, nakita yan, state of discipline ng tao. Please. Kunti. That is exactly, sir, the, the logic why uh, introductory, sir, yung, ano, yung sa 11 and 12. Everything would be explained. Hindi siya basta i-reintroduce lang siya ng ganun. So that mawala yung, exactly, sir, you let us disabuse the mind of the public regarding the salitang marcha. Uh, basic, sir, sa military organization in, ang marches because it, it uh, developed unity, cohesion, uh, oneness. But it has to be explained, sir, before before they go into the actual ROTC program or the, the citizen soldiers training. Sa 11 and 12, everything will be explained. Ano yung, ano yung logic? Bakit ginagawa ito sa military? At least by the time na i-subject sila dun sa marches, yun sa mga rigors sa military, they understand the reason why we need to do these things. Kesa yung 11 and 12, uh, ano yung natin kagad na introducer. Kaya nga sa preparatory, sir, yung 11 and 12 for succeeding training, sir. So they'd be prepared to the rigors of the training eventually. Mr. Chairman, let me join you in that comment, yung marching, no? Uh, for me, uh, I, I'm sure I didn't march as much as you did no? in your lifetime and in compared to my lifetime. But my small, kasi nag ako, no? my, my small time that I did uh, marching, for me, marching is a symbol of um, respecting the chain of command. No? It's a very basic symbol uh, of respecting the chain of command because it, nakita ko dito sa curriculum, whether it's natural or man-made disasters, uh, you need to know how to listen and how to obey the chain of command. You know? Because if you don't know how to do that, the whole, con the whole concept will fail no? or the whole body will fail. No? So the basic uh, premise of that uh, marching, even though it's menial and uh, very basic, is to learn how to respect the chain of command. No? That, that, that's my take away from doing CAT when I was younger. No? But, yeah. Mr. Uh, alam mo, Your Honor, yung, yung simple, kahit na wala ka sa military, ha, kung dito ka sa disaster uh, operation, pag sabi ng leader ninyo sa rescue team, pull! Hindi kayo nagkakasabay, nag-pull ng, uh, ng rope doon sa nirescue ninyo. Uh, Lunod, nalunod yung nirescue ninyo dahil walang unity of command ka as you have said. Pull! Dapat sabay ang pag-pull, di ba? Hindi yan military ha? Yan yeah, sa uh, disaster relief operation. Pero very important. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to pursue uh, uh, you, Sek, no, yung uh, uh, line of questioning earlier, the, the, one of the reasons why you decided to put it at the tertiary level is to produce uh, reserve officers. No, I, I heard you mention that earlier. No, that is uh, one of the objectives. It's really the objective. After training for, for two years, we have uh, warm bodies that will enter the reserve force. Tama po ba? Okay. And uh, in the proposal, itong NCST, uh, the graduates of NC NCST will enable them to uh, or. or Will, uh, they are automatically part of the reserve force. Tama po ba? Yes, sir. Uh -oh. yes. But they're not officers. No, sir. Those who will graduate for the four-year program would be, will be commissioned in the reserve force with a uh, reserve commission, sir. Okay. Um, with, with that in mind, I was looking at the objectives under the proposal, itong bagong batas, no? Uh, and uh, ang, ang nakukuha kong uh nakukuha kong direction is to emphasize on uh disaster preparedness no? um let me just go to here um pro shall provide students with practical and applicable knowledge and skills that are necessary essential and ideal for survival re resilience and providing service in times of local and national emergencies and disasters um but I was going through the uh, intended curriculum, wala akong nakitang uh, military 
training in this uh, curriculum is that it's that is that intentional no sir there would be a military uh, uh, military centric uh, training sir the, the 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 curriculum would be composed of uh, individual survival and safety civic duty sir community mass emergency and disaster response and citizen soldier training sir ah in yes. sa dulo yes sir uh, uh, citizen soldier training but uh, um but if if uh, if your honor uh, yeah. i think uh, attorney parolan want to respond yeah go ahead yeah. Oh, your honor uh, just to point out and, and in support of the usec uh, the military training is already included in the ncst curriculum it's under the uh, out of hand it's purely military skills and competencies are under the citizen soldier training but there are also topics or subjects which are already covered uh, which have military application, but are already covered, for example, in, in, uh, in the individual uh, emergency and disaster skills, survival and safety skills. General uh, yung map reading, uh, land navigation, all of which are have military application skills, but also have DRM uh, application. Uh, land navigation, kasi, for example, nung panahon ng uh, Yolanda, sir, maraming nakaradyo eh, maraming nakakuha ng radyo, but none of them were able to provide kung nasaan sila. Kasi we don't know where we are. So basic land navigation and map reading are already included. Uh, pero hindi siya nilagay, hindi lang siya na-classify under the uh, purely citizen-soldier training. But the, but the skills and competencies required for military skills uh, is already covered in, the, in those two years, uh, Mr. Chair. Who will be the chairman of this NCST? program technical panel actually it's supposed to be the it's supposed to be the chair right now but the in terms of the chairman walang naka indicate dyan. so it's the body would have to choose the chairperson uh, Mr. okay chair. no, no, the, the reason Similar why asked, to a regular technical panel of chad right now sir so so, so, so ibang technical panel identified and chairman diba? for example in the marine uh course i know it's marina who chairs the technical panel actually not ex Exactly, sir. But, but I will check on the... Diba pag uh, medical course, obviously, doctor ang... Uh... May, may ano, sir, uh, use a technical panel natin ngayon. Uh, it's appointed by the chairperson of uh, CHED. Pero it can be... But it must be someone who is well within uh, the expertise of that field, uh, Mr. Okay. Chair. No, a recognized that... expert okay. in the field. All right. Uh, so in this case, walang identified. Adun sa uh, consensus version, walang walang nakalagay, okay. Mr. Chair. No, the reason why I ask because uh, I, I was going back and forth uh, on this National Citizen Service Training Program, and I'm comparing it to the current Civic Welfare Training Service of the National Service Training Program. In nasabi ni Chair kanina, no? Um, actually, loosely, uh, loosely, my interpretation, loosely. Uh, papasok niman yung yung disaster preparedness dito sa Civic Welfare Training Service. Eh. Loosely, yeah. Um, other than that, the only difference is the citizen soldier training. No? And if you remove citizen soldier training, basically, pwede nang pumasok in Civic Welfare Training Service. No? Loosely, yeah. Loosely. Okay. So, if we are going to bring back ROTC, but there is no significant difference between CWTS and this NCST, no, yung bagong proposal, then parang, parang minamandatory lang natin yung CWTS. So I was, I was actually going through the technical panel because sabi ko baka pwedeng the AFP should head that. But in the proposal, hindi rin AFP ang mag -head. So, in, in other words, if AFP will not head the technical panel and the citizen soldier training is only a small component, then actually we're not bringing back our OTC. We're just enhancing itong NSTP. My opinion to, ah, based on my analysis here. No? So, uh, parang uh, in, in, in short, we're not bringing, uh, we're not, uh, we're not, um, uh, the intention of bringing back ROTC 
is not being fulfilled by the proposal. What is being fulfilled by the proposal is just enhancing the current NSTP program and making CWTS mandatory. That's one, Mr. Chair. And then number two, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I agree with your comment earlier, no, that um, you know, ROTC is a strong brand, no. And tama si Yusek. In fact, when we were debating this in the basic education, uh, we told ourselves also that it's a misnomer, no. But we actually retained ROTC in basic education because the, the name ROTC is a very strong brand, no, no. Alam ng lahat ng tao yan, eh. And it symbolizes discipline, patriotism, love for country. No? Yan ang, pag sinabi mong ROTC, yan ang lalabas sa, sa isipan ng tao. And that's actually the direction of ROTC. That's why when Attorney Garcia mentioned earlier that the, the, the single most important uh, objective of ROTC is to create warm bodies in the reserve force, better officers at the reserve force. But I'm not getting it here parang in the current proposal right now uh actually to be honest in citizen soldier training nasa dulo nga eh no it's in the dulo it's not in it's not in the main body parang incidental na lang siya mr chair in any way your honor um uh, we have the final say yes correct this committee correct. will have the final say we will make the necessary uh, corrections uh, hindi naman porke sinabit nila yes, yan definitely. will uh, accept that hook line in sinker yeah uh, and dami namang bills dito na in consideration so ko ano maganda diyan kukunin natin ano maganda dito para yes. to make up for the uh, substitute bill yeah. na ipapasa natin sa plenary yes. but anyway mr chairman uh, before you continue yeah. gusto ko lang rin na uh, yung ROTC is a misnomer uh, my humble opinion is that Reserve Officer Training Corps, sabi nyo, hindi, we are the training officers. Dahil nga, yung two-year uh, course na yan, hindi pang officers. Pang, uh, uh, sa 11 and 12. Ay, nene, yung, yung, yung ROTC is a misnomer. Dahil nga, hindi, hindi naman lahat magiging officer. Pero, technically speaking, alam mo, yung mga sarhinto, Officers din yan sila eh. Non-commissioned officers nga lang. To, to be technical about it, non-commissioned officers. Itong mga lieutenant to general, they are commissioned officers. So kung sinabi mong reserve officers, training corps, pasok, pasok pa rin yan kahit na doon sa basic ROTC. Dahil itong mga sarhinto, itong mga two-year two -year course graduate at two-year uh, basic ROTC program graduates ay... Maku ma hindi makukomission ko di ma-enlist into the reserve force as privates to sergeants which are non commissioned officer ranks so i i i, I don't see kwa na uh, technically speaking lang ah, na uh, hindi natin tatanggapin dahil hindi sila magiging official yun lang please continue sir thank you thank you mr chair and you're an expert in that no i i i will uh, adhere to your uh wisdom in, in, in so far as uh, uh, the officer and the ranking is concerned. You're, you're an expert in that. But my, my personal take on the proposal, Mr. Chair, uh, tinanggal na nga ho natin yung uh, brand na ROTC uh, and then in, linagay pa natin sa dulo yung citizen soldier training. So my, my personal uh, take and my personal uh, feeling when I, I read all of this is we're just enhancing NSTP. No, Mr. Mr. Chair, and... Uh, Kaya sabi ko kayo na, Your Honor, parang NSTP Plus lang itong <laughs> na, program na ito. Pa Kaya, na, but anyway, yeah, yeah, Mr. Chair, so I just want to put that on record because our intention really is to revive, yes, ROTC, just like prior to the NSTP period wherein ROTC was uh, mandatory. No? And everyone who graduates uh, from ROTC enters into the reserve force. No? Whether they're the officer or not, uh, that's another point. But the point there is, pumapasok sila in our reserve force. And that should be very clear in the law. Um, tama si Ronald, uh, and dito si Ronald. Itong, I was looking at the NSTP law, the creation of a national service training program. In this law, there's no mention saan siya ilalagay. Tama po ba? No? 
Wala. So it was created, but nobody heads it. But in the law, we're now, actually, we're, we're putting it under OCD. I read here. But my, in my opinion, this National Service Training Program is a failed program because under the law, it was created, but nobody knows kung saan siya magre-report. No? So, ang punto ko lang mo doon, ito, Mr. Chair, is I think we're all in unison that ROTC should be revived. No? And the concept, the pure concept of ROTC should be embedded in the law, which is to feed in into our reserve officers, uh, reserve uh, force to create more warm bodies. And uh, my, my point here, Mr. Chair, is while the disaster management is an important skill in knowledge, but it should be part and parcel of the military training. No? Because the military training is the unique feature of ROTC. No? And we just have to admit the military training is what gives discipline, what gives love of country, what gives um, patriotism. No? Uh, that's what we, my, in my proposal, that's what we want to make it more pronounced. No? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, uh, Your Honor. Anyway, alam naman natin lahat ng military trainings, whether it is in the Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, ay may component talaga yan ng disaster, uh, uh, disaster uh, management, disaster uh, rescue and relief operations. Uh, Kompleto po yan. Uh, yung basic, mga basic life support, uh, pinaka-basic yan sa training ng military. Uh, I, 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 I can see the wisdom why kailangan pa natin ihiwalay itong dalawa na ito. Eh, dati naman itong components talaga ng military training, itong mga disaster uh, rescue operations, disaster management. Anyway, uh, Mr. Chair. Are you done? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes uh, General Garcia, sir. sir. Gusto ko lang pong linawin yung uh, military courses po natin kasi, like ROTC, uh, merong basic, merong advanced. So, hindi po misnomer yung ROTC kung ilalagay mo sa senior high Actually, you're saving time and you're already preparing the, the, the youth to their constitutional duty. They take the basic course of ROTC during senior high. They take in uh, advance as an optional course if they want to pursue it. Pero nagawa mo na yung principal training mo, you already have basic military training very early on without any delay. So... Tuloy-tuloy lang po ang military training mo mula sa pagkabata mo, Cub Scout, Boy Scout, CAT in junior high school, that is the preparation. Actually, doon wala namang shocking, dinaanan po natin lahat yan, nag-PMT tayo. After PMT, we did ROTC. Wala namang, wala namang culture shock na nangyari sa atin. As a matter of fact, napakarami sa ating officers ngayon are product of ROTC who are with the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Bakit breaking to them softly pa yung ginagawa natin? We're actually delaying the kids. They're, we're delaying their, their training when we can already give it to them in senior high. Pagdating sa college, optional. Yun na lang ang babaguhin natin, yung curriculum nung, nung senior high, kung to qualify them for commission already. Hindi yung may separate course ka pa ng ROTC na four-year course para gumawa ka ng, para magkaroon ka ng officer sa reserve at saka sa regular. Existing, existing foundation, existing institutions, exi existing po ang Boy Scout. Doon natin turuan ng love of country. Doon natin turuan ng patriotism, ng integrity, ng honesty. Doon natin turuan ng habang lumalaki po, tinuturuan natin ng skills. Hanggang sa dumating sa senior high, dati naman po ang ROTC, basic ROTC, nasa lugar ng senior high ngayon. Ito sir, uh, just to inform you, yes, sir. ganito talaga yan yung pinakaunang proposal namin. Senator Tolentino, Senator Wynne Gatsalian, ako, ang, aming, ang mga bills namin ay grades 11 to 12. Noon pa yan, panahon pa ni President Duterte. Ito ngayon, nagbago lang ito dahil nga uh, nag-uusap yung CHED, nag-uusap yung DepEd, pati yung AFP, nag-uusap. Malaking portion, kasi, malaking consideration kasi doon yung uh, budgetary requirements. Sa ngayon kasi, yung DepEd, wala pas lang existing uh, uh, facilities para sa ROTC. Pero ngayon, meron na ang, ang higher education, 
ang mga colleges, mayroon na sila existing uh, facilities ng RTC. At malaking consideration talaga yung budget. Kaya nga, sabi ko sa'yo, break it to them gently uh, muna. Kasi masyak kagad yung gobyerno sa gagastusin dito. Uh, basta sir, ang importante, may balik mo ng RTC. Yan ang importante ang gusto natin. May balik mo na ito, then bahala na later kung gusto natin i-amend. Pag marami ng pera ang gobyerno, i-amend natin sa grades 11 to 12. Kasi maraming, maraming rason din ang DepEd. Bakit uh, parang uh, nag-give up ang DepEd? Unang-una, nung una, ang DepEd gustong-gusto nila, grades 11 and 12. Pero in, during the, in the course of their analysis, nakita nila nga, mas maganda nga pala, chid ang maghawak nila dahil existing na yung facilities nila. So doon natin ilagay. But anyway, sir, alam ko yung gusto mo. Sir, tama Ay, po yung... Gusto. Pariho tayo ng gusto. Pero... Tama po yung sinabi nyo. Yeah. Kaya just for the record lang po, uh, an OTC will ultimately, in the long run, be cheaper to, to do right away. Because when we finally decide to implement RA 7077, yung pong citizens mili uh, compulsory citizens military training, which is the mandate of the Constitution, it will become more expensive for us. Kasi pag-uusapan na natin doon, yung mga, mag, uh, uh, mga hindi nag-ROTC na nagtatrabaho sa mga opisina na, kasi 18 to 25 years old po yun. So pag nag-register sila at tinawag sila, sweldo po nila pag-uusapan pa natin. Pero kung tatapusin na po natin sa high school, yung kanilang duty to train, equivalent ng CCMT po yung ROTC, then we are done with this boys. Then we can we can tackle yes, eventually. We'll take in, we'll take in. Opo, opo sir. Kung nakuha ko yung uh, gusto mo sir, talagang uh, pagkaganda niyan. But uh, for now, yun nga, na-limit mo natin sa college dahil nga yung uh, budget consideration napakalaki po. So dandahan nila natin ito. Uh, sir, uh, if I may, uh, pagbigyan mo natin si Dr. Raymond Arcega, uh, the, uh, sir, uh, Commission on Accreditation for local college and universities. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, uh, Honorable Senator. Um, again, I'm the president of local colleges and universities of Commission for Accreditation and under our care is about 130 plus LCUs and I'm also appearing as the chairman of the National Network of Quality Assurance Agencies accrediting both SUC and uh, LUCs. Um, briefly, uh, Mr. Chair, we're of course, in favor no, of uh, the implementation of the program. This is my fourth time attending in the Philippine Senate, and conceptually, we interpose no objection. In fact, in the previous bills presented, the suggestion is mandatory. Again, we interpose no objection because really the problem of the Filipino youth hindi, hindi, today... Bago, mandatory pa rin. Yes, uh, okay. Filipino youth really is discipline, uh, love of country, and patriotism. Uh, of course... In the past implementation, I'm part of it when I took my ROTC and CAT. There are some items, I guess, that we have to fix. But the outcome of ROTC is definitely beneficial to all Filipinos, specifically those that are uh, in high school and college. So we also are in favor of bringing it down to 11 and 12 because 11 and 12 are practically college during our generation. 11 and 12 is what we know as first and second year in college. And you know, discipline, um, patriotism, love of countries has already been compromised that early. Um, so we interpose objection. Uh, only, uh, Senator, the time that I sat here, uh, we propose that the implementation be not purely be military, but a combination of the civilian and military, particularly the curriculum. In the past proposals, I've seen the structure uh, proposed that there will be some deputies and all combination of civilian and military, but we should not deny ourselves no, of a strategy that would definitely enhance uh, young's commitment to love their country. No, it can be gleaned in all the classrooms right now. Now, um, towards the end of my statement, Senator, it's about the budget. I hope uh, the implementing body will find ways on how we can, even without, without putting the budget as a block to implement the same. Because if it will be implemented uh, with the military personnel and organization, you might have the facilities and equipments already. No, it's all about the faculty to handle the same. No, but again, um, I don't know how many years we've been talking this, but Senator, um, the nation cannot wait anymore uh, with the kind of with the level of discipline and with the level of 
patriotism, yung simple lang pagtatapo ng basura, pagtawid sa tamang lugar, pag pag uh, pagrespeto sa mga nakakataas, paggalang sa mga guro. These are all teachings we've got the time that we were at ROTC and uh, CAT, no? So we don't want to deny the incoming generation of the opportunity also to become like us. That while we say something against the government, while we say something against our superiors, we still kept that respect over these people supervising us. So again, Mr. Chair, in summary, um, we interpose objection for mandatory implementation, provided the curriculum will be designed combined by the civilian and the military, and so with the composition of the officials who will implement the same. Uh, the nation needs this so urgently. Um, to be able to see everyone developing, as I heard from the Senator, from Senator Gachalian, that value of discipline, uh, patriotism, and love of country. And the faculty and teachers cannot deny that this happens to be a problem across all educational institutions. So 11 and 12, I guess it should be considered because they're practically first and second year in college before. And then as to the budget, I hope we'd be able to identify the soonest where we can have it or maximize the budget that we have right now. So not to prolong the implementation of the same. Thank you, Your Honors. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Arsiga. Maraming salamat. Alam mo, yung sinabi mo ngayon, yung mga kulang sa disiplina, uh, ito ha, pagbaba namin sa aeroplano kahapon, di ba, merong pagsibo Pacific ka, sasalubungin ka ng uh, shuttle bus doon sa baba na hagdan, tapos ihatid ka, isa shuttle ka. Pagpasok mo doon sa bus, uh, may sumakay na mga buntis, may sumakay na matatanda. Makita mo yung mga lalaki na malalakas, ang babata pa. Nandoon lang, nakayuko, nagsigitik-stiks, kunyari, walang nakikita. Gusto ko na sampalin yung ulo ba, na, uy, matanda, oh, po, tumayo ka pa, po, yung matanda, oh, may bata, ay may babae. Na, na, wala na, hindi na natuturo sa kabataan natin ngayon na yung priority for the weaker sex and the all the people I eh, dapat sila pagbigyan palagi ng uh, priority. Uh, ayaw pansinin, 25 years old na ang laki ng katawan, nakaupo lang, hindi pinapansin. Ang matanda, hirap na hirap, di ba? Yung sasakay ka sa bus, uh, kwan? shuttle bus ng uh, Cebu Pacific, uh, ganun-ganun ka kasi may hawa ka doon sa, ganun-ganun, pag mag-break bigla, ganun yung matanda, um, sub -sub. ako lang tumayo, pinaupo ko yung matanda, tapos binulungan ng security ko yung malaking mama doon na bata pa. Brad, Ma, hindi ka na konsensya doon sa matanda na eh, hindi mo pinaupo. Ah, pariho lang kami nagbayad ng ticket. O, oh, isipin mo. Eh, kung hindi ako nakapigil, oh, sinuntok ko na yung bata na yon. Pero, eh, yun talaga, importante disiplina ng kabataan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mr. Chair, just to join in the conversation, uh, I actually conducted a focus group eh, no, on uh, ROTC. And uh, hindi ko lang dala yung report, no? but just to share with the committee, in line with what the chairman said, mal maraki, malaking suporta ng taong bayan sa ROTC. And pag tinanong mo sila kung bakit, the top three answers will be number one, discipline. Number two, physical activity. No? Because nga, uh, ang bata ngayon nakadikit na sa phone. Eh. No? And number three is patriotism. Uh, and most of these uh, respondents are people like us no, who went through either CAT or ROTC. But yung mundo ngayon, iba na because ang bata nakadikit ngayon sa cellphone. Eh. And the lack of physical activity is what drives the support of our constituency for ROTC. And, and that's in line with the marching. No? Actually, marching might be, to some, might be uh, katawa-tawa, but gusto nila yan because it, it, it's, it's a symbol of, it's also a physical activity. Yeah. No? Uh, people are out marching, doing something, um, uh, moving around, and that uh, our constituents like that as opposed to, yun nga, no? parating naka-cellphone or nag games Just to share with the body. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just would like to strike out from the record yung sinabi kong weaker sex. Eh, baka mamaya magali sa akin yung mga babae. Uh, gender equality tayo. Uh, in, instead of weaker sex, sabihin mo, babae or uh, female. Uh, 
magalit sa akin yung mga anak ko na babae. Pasensya ka na, sorry. Uh, ay, secretariat, tagalin yun from the records. Y y y okay lang, magbigyan natin si Ronald. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, uh, music or Dima. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, again, as uh, I've said, what I've said, uh, we just gathered all the ROTC commanders, uh, cadet officers from different universities together with the PMA cadets, PNPA, PMMA, and uh, also the Sangguniang Kabataan presidents. And uh, Senator uh, Tolentino was our uh, guest there. And uh, nung una, we were trying to integrate them para makita naman ng mga SK kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga kadete ng ROTC at PMA. Sabi nila, uh, yung iba sa kanila, baka hindi nila kaya yung subjects na napapakita nung sa ROTC at sa PMA. Pero after the activity, the SK leaders, the leaders of all the youth in every province and city, talagang nag-enjoy sila. And uh, nagtatanong sila, bakit walang ganun? Sabi ko, kasi hindi nyo kasi inabutan yung mandatory ROTC. And uh, just to show you for a minute, uh, kindly play. These are all the SK leaders of our country and they enjoyed some of the subjects being uh, shown to them. Ayan, uh, mga SK leaders yan, puro bukal at konsehal po yan ng ating bansa. Pwedeng uh, mahaba pa yan, mahaba pa? I-post muna natin. I-post muna natin dahil babalik si Senator Tolentino sa, sa CA. Uh, pakinggan muna natin yung kanyang uh, parting statement. Idyo rin ako eh. Idyo rin ako. Patungan yung video. Saglit lang, Ronald, kasi I have to vote during the plenary dun sa confirmation ni Secretary Ople and uh, the COA chairman. So, papasalamat ako kay Attorney Estrada. I ask him to stay. Uh, para mapakinggan. Five minutes lang ako. Five minutes lang ako. Pakinggan. Tingnan nga natin itong vid video ko. Uh, it has something to do with what the lower house will decide today. What I have here is the committee report. Eventually this afternoon, the House of Representatives will decide vote to naturalize one of the best imports in the Philippines sa Hinebra, si Bra Justin Brownlee. Mayiging Pilipino. Tumaan to sa Senate hearing, listen to this, and it will answer the question of General Calonso. Plaki play nga. Lakasan natin. Constitution. And I quote, the prime duty of government is to serve and protect the people. The government may call upon the people to defend the state. And in the fulfillment thereof, all citizens may be required under conditions provided by law to render personal, military, or civil service. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to defend the Philippines? Are you willing to participate in any disaster, calamity, rescue operations during typhoon season? Okay. Your answer is opo. opo. So that means uh, you're willing to join the Philippine Army Reserve Force. 
Thank you, Mr. Brown. I have no further questions. questions. Uh, he's he's uh, on the brink of being a Filipino citizen. Willing to join the Philippine Army Reserve. 6566. Kung meron tayong... Meron tayong ibang tao na dugong banyaga tapos magi gusto maging Pilipino, gusto maging bahagi ng sandatahang lakas, eh dapat siguro yung Pilipino, ganun din. Yung mga kabataan natin na talagang sinilang dito na hindi na kailangan i-naturalize, ay eh maging handa at sagutin yung tanong ni General Calonso kanina, yung preparedness, uh, willingness to serve, etc., etc. That answers that. But before I leave, I have two good news. I would, uh, with the permission of the chairman, and the other members of this committee, hindi pa nyo ho alam lahat ito. Itong sasabihin ko, it, it will uh, probably be a, an eye-opener for those serving in uh, CHED, Ch Ch kasama yung mga, mga private and public uh, universities and colleges. This will be an eye-opener for all of you. Uh, matagal ko na pong binubuno ito, sikreto lang. Buhay po ang ROTC. Buhay po ang ROTC. In fact, I've done a lot of paid work. Tahimik lang. Ang dami kong tinrabaho. I would like to have a three-minute report coming from Attorney Spocky Farulan. Any update or even what, what was the latest in so far as the meetings we undertook? Uh, any development? This has something to do with what you will hear for the first time. I envision for next year a Philippine ROTC Games. Attorney Farulan, you have two minutes. If you can update and report uh, to this committee. This uh, is related. This is not related. This is relevant. This is not relevant. This is ROTC, which will happen next year. And next year will be the revitalization of the ROTC program in a different pathway, in a different manner. Go ahead, uh, Attorney Farulan. With the Office of... Uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the leadership of the Office of Center Talentino, the Commission on Higher Education, as well as the different branches of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the DND, and the Philippine Sports Commission has been working on a program to be known as the ROTC Games or ROTC Olympics. We, we still have to finalize it, which would uh, develop a program that would tap the, uh, that would tap the assets and, 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 and uh, the youth in the ROTC human resource right now, our ROTC cadets, and provide for them a venue where we can identify them, who among them are the best in the sports. Uh, this is going to be a platform for identifying uh, talents in sports, and this will also be a platform for uh, for the different ROTC units to showcase their skills and as, at the same time show unity and show how um, the ROTC program is in existence right now, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the good senator, our uh, Senator Talentino, has also uh, wanted to make sure that this program imbibes even, uh, we should showcase the, the skills that they've learned and translated into sports, which could also be translatable into defending our country, defending against threats, and also showcasing the skills that ROTC cadets that we have right now are doing. And even without that, even without a law, even without an ROTC uh, strengthening law being passed, that what we have right now with that ROTC uh, games, ROTC Olympics, we can create that pool of uh, young men and women who can actually defend our country and even be the platform for them to uh, to, 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 to showcase our sports talents abroad, uh, locally and abroad, Mr. Chair. I, I hope that gave us the program. You, Attorney Farulan, uh, well said. Uh, General Alandoni, uh, J9, can, can you refresh the, my memory as well as all those present here, what transpired during our several meetings involving the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, as per instruction of the Secretary of National Defense. J9, you have the floor. But, but, but before you have the floor, ang uh, siguro tawagin niyo yung ROTC Olympics at the same time Brigadier General uh, Francis Tolentino Philippine Army Cup. Ha? Yes, yeah, yung, sir, uh, <laughs> Philippine uh, uh, you, Tolentino, sir. Brigadier General Tolentino what, Cup. <laughs> what, what is being envisioned here is greater than the Palarong Pambansa. This is not going to be a glorified sports fest or intramurals. We will break Philippine records. 
We will break Philippine records. We, this will be a pool of ROTC athletes from where the Southeast Asian Games uh, athletes will be selected from, including the Asian Games. Ang nangyayari po ganito, huwag magagalit. Pag nanalo na si Heidelin Diaz, oh, Philippine Air Force ka na, doning. Pag nanalo na si Yumer Martial, Philippine uh, Air Force pareho pala yun. Pag nanalo si Carlo Paalam, o oh, uh, Coast Guard ka. Pag nanalo si Neste Pitesio, Coast Guard ka o Philippine Navy. They, will, they are being recognized after garnering a medal or an honor for the country. Now we reverse that. Gagawin natin, yun na yung pool, yung ROTC cadets. Now we reverse also the situation wherein the varsity players are exempted from ROTC. Ito yung mga puging, ayaw maglaro. Exempted sa, uh, kasi NCAA player, UAAP player. Hindi ka makakasama sa ROTC games ko kahit Kung kahit varsity player ka, kung hindi ka maging ROTC cadet. We reverse the psychological mind of an athlete that he is supposed to be an elite within the academic community. You are part of the ROTC because you have to serve. Ito yung napag-usap. Mahaba na akong pag-uusap to without your knowledge. Uh, Gerald Haladoni, uh, you have the floor. Huwag mo na sabihin na we will start with the uh, silent drill competition. We will start with the, dr the drum and bugle competition and we will culminate with the Miss Philippines ROTC 2023. Complete. Completo na ho ito, tapos na to. Yeah, you, you have the floor. Today, you have the floor. Completo. Thank you, sir. Uh, from the AP perspective, sir, uh, we already talked. Uh, ma marami pong, ang concept naman talaga, sir, is this will become nationwide. And then, uh, meron na uh, selection process and then competition from province na yung lowest sir, na uh, mag-pool ng ROTC up to the national. So, this is a very massive uh, activity, sir. And uh, as of now, sir, uh, ang concept ay na napag-usapan na with Chad and all the other, pati ang Philippine Sports Commission, sinama po ni Senator Tolentino, para mabigyan po ng magandang uh, concept kung paano i... Because this is the first the first time, sir, nagagawin. Uh, Kung baga, this is a novel uh, project of the senator. So, kailangan po ng pag-usapan. Uh, of this committee, not, not just me. Hindi, But yung, yung brain cell, sir. Eh. So, in the end, sir, uh, ang latest na pagkaalam po namin, sir, uh, nandun na sa... na-consider na siya yata siya sa for budget, sir. Na because this is over and above, sa budget po ng AFP on the Reserve Force Development. GHQ will implement. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, ano ito, sir? Uh, parang interagency collaboration din ito kasi hindi to purely AFP. Uh, nandito yung PSC, nandyan din yung, yung CHED na, sa, kasi ROTC po, sir. And then, uh, hopefully, sir, uh, as envisioned by the good senator, uh, maganda yung outcome. And uh, it's a good, uh, ano din sir, come on, na bago ma-implement yung itong bill, sir, pag na, napasa na, uh, meron na po nakikita sila na ay may, may mga ganun pala sa ROTC. So yun na po, sir, yung so, from the Sir, uh, if I may add, it will be Army ROTC versus Air Force ROTC versus Navy ROTC. And the winners will play exhibition games against the Philippine Military Academy, PNPA, and PMMA. So, we, it, this will happen before the typhoon season. That's why we invite all of you to help us and support this program. Ito talaga yung pagsisimula habang binabalangkas pa ho yung mga batas na ating pinag-uusapan. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chairman, Senator Gachalian. Uh, I rest my case. I have to transfer to another hearing. Salamat po at mananghalian na kayo. Thank you, uh, Your Honor, Senator Tolentino. Uh, meron pa bang hindi na kapag salita? Ano bang gustong... Uh, Sasabihin? Kung... Senator Wynn, okay ka na? Mr. Chair, I, I know that we will be... Uh, my, my comment no, uh, generally on the bill. This is the first time I saw the bill. And uh, my general comment, Mr. Chair, is uh, um, let, let's make ROTC pronounced in the law. No, That is my general comment here. Uh, because ROTC, aside from being a strong brand, no, uh, it's a symbol of discipline no? and if we will put another brand such as the national Cer citizens service training ncst yung tao hindi ho ma-appreciate na rotc ho to eh no? most of them are nodding nodding their heads uh, 
Mr. Chair, I so think, uh, I, I, I know agree that, with you. Yeah, we will have an, a, a technical working group uh, later on. Of course, uh, the, the chairman will, will spearhead that and uh, we'll, we'll make certain proposals also. And, uh, and, and, and I hope that the... Uh, consensus team no alam po kayo nag ano will take that into consideration no? because um uh, it's in, branding is also important you have to remember we're bringing back something uh from almost the dead no so it's important that we have a strong brand so that people will appreciate and we will have uh, the support of the general public and before we end mr chair i i had an opportunity to visit um, Singapore and Finland. Both the countries have mandatory conscription no? at the age of, age of 18. Uh, wala hong pinipili doon. In Finland, if you reach the age of 18, everyone uh, should uh, undergo one-year military training. Uh, Singapore, it's the same thing. And if you don't, kulong. No? Very strict sila doon. And... Um, in Singapore, I when I visited the the the, the DND equivalent in Singapore, uh, they were very passionate. I can feel the passion in their uh, national service. Oh, they call it national service, and uh, they were telling me that, of course, advocate, advocates will some advocates will try to uh, remove the mandatory feature of the national service, but the public, you know, almost. All public, 90% of their of their constituents support this program, and because of that, I just want to share a slide, Mr. Chair, no? a favorite quote of mine when I was doing research on ROTC, and this is from Lee Kuan Yew, and this is in line with what Attorney Garcia mentioned. No? In his quote, um, uh, this is in the discussion of their national service. The best way to deter any Malaysian plan to regain control of Singapore, of course, wala nang away between Malaysia and Singapore, no? but this is during those times, was their knowledge that even if they could subdue our armed forces, they would, they would have to keep down a whole people well-trained in the use of arms and explosives. A punto dito, lahat sa Singapore trained. Lahat sa Singapore ready. Lahat sa Singapore ready tumulong. No? That is the philosophy. Of course, the Malaysian Singapore issue wala na huyan but the philosophy of training the entire constituency to be ready you know, to defend their country whether natural or man made that is the philosophy why Singapore retained its national service after many many years even through criticisms even through periods of uh, challenge but they remained it to date you know? so that's it Mr Chair and thank you very much for the opportunity thank you uh, Senator Getsalian uh... You encapsulate everything that we we have been talking here uh, for the last uh, uh, how many hours? Uh, thank you for hours. Maraming salamat. Uh, you know, I, I've been to Israel then uh, for a couple of times. Siguro six times ako pabalik balik sa Israel uh, through the invitation of the Mossad. And uh, kita mo talaga doon yung mga babae, ang babae na nagtitraining. Wala pa kialam kung maganda ka o pangit ka, pero maganda man lahat ng babae doon, di ba? Wala pa kialam, basta talaga mandatory nagte-training sila nandoon sa boundary between na uh, yung pinaglalabanan ng uh, pinaglalabanan ng uh, uh, Lebanese ano yung kuan ng Lebanon, ng ha? Uh, yung uh, ano yung grupo ng Lebanon? Hamas, uh, Hezbollah. Nandun is bala sa kabilang side, nagkakamayan na siya. Pero yung babae, hinahamon pa yung, sige, tawid kayo dito. Ganun, ganun po yung, uh, kung doon, ganun po yung uh, uh, conscription nila. Walang pili. So sana tayo dito, uh, hindi naman conscription itong habol natin. Simpleng mandatory aruti sila ito. One, one Saturday per week lang ito, di ba? One day per week, uh, Sana ha, mapagbigyan natin ang ating mahal na bayan na mapanatag siya na kung may mangyayari man, mayroon siyang mga anak na talagang willing willing to to die for this motherland. Uh, lahat naman tayo, Pilipino, duty natin yan to defend this country. With or without that constitution. Di ba? Kahit na hindi mo isipin yung constitution, isipin mo lang yung pagka-Pilipino mo. Uh, sino magdedepensa sa Pilipinas kundi Pilipino? Di ba? Uh, moral duty natin yan. Re regardless of whether it is a constitutional duty 
or legal obligation or what. It is your moral obligation being a Filipino to defend your homeland. Yun lang naman. Hindi lang against sa uh, intrusion, kundi against all forms of uh, calamities. Whether man-made or natural calamities, nandyan tayo para tumulong sa ating kapwa. So from here, I think uh, we have uh, taken uh, a lot of uh, discussions already. And uh, uh, from here, I think uh, we will uh, create a technical working group para ma-fine-tune natin ito lahat. And I hope uh, lahat kayong ahinsya na andito, pati yung ating mga stakeholders na uh, non-government agencies, uh, please uh, join us in the technical working group para po ma makakama up tayo ng uh, uh, piece of legislation that we can be truly proud of. Uh, sana uh, samahan nyo kami dito. So, ano, si Komsek, Suspend or uh, adjourn? Suspend ba? Okay, may, may working group pa tayo. So from here, wala na magsalita, sir, no? Okay na tayo. Again, uh, from the bottom of my heart, maraming salamat sa inyong pagdating dito. Lalong-lalo uh, na itong mga retired natin ng mga general, kahit na uh, mahirap na bumangon sa umaga, pero andito pa rin sila para sumali sa discussion. Thank you, sir. Maraming salamat sa inyo and sa, sa lahat. Thank you again. Uh, the hearing is suspended. Salamat.